I feel like I should have like headphones on. Well, I do have headphones on and be sitting in like that cartoon room with the cat because it's about to rain and play that song. I'm feeling the chill vibes today. It's Friday vibes. TGIF. TGIF, even though everything sucks right now. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. And remember, it's okay to cry. And also remember that I am not emotionally stable. <sighs> Welcome. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Today sucks. <laughs> and I was not planning to go live today. Um, but, you know, our bestie, RH, Rach, our favorite friend here on the show, Rach, she bestowed a, a small gift onto us. Um, she just. Dis- <laughs> She bestowed uh, the gift of posting some tea and then deleting it. Ironically, while also talking about why you should be confident in your social media posting. <laughs> I saw some people were uh, speculating in the comments and uh, in, in the chat while we were getting ready, listening to some cool jams. And uh, it's not the LGBTQ plus episode. That one I listened to, I had no issues with it, you know, other than the fact that should she be the one, should Rachel be the one, or any mother or person, parent, be the one to talk about such sensitive topics, even if the son agrees, you know, thinks it's okay. I mean, that's coming from her. Um, But the message was what I align with, you know, support your kids and whatever they want to do. You know, people on the internet that don't accept that lifestyle, fuck them, who cares? excuse my French. Um, so I was on team Rachel for that one. So that's not the one she deleted. However, she did get a lot of negative comments on Instagram, undeservedly so in my opinion, um, that seemed to still be up. But the podcast that we're going to listen to today has been wiped from the interwebs. Um, however, because I don't, I don't even know why exactly. I think I was sitting here and I saw, I would go through podcasts and I listen to different ones throughout the day, depending if I'm driving or if I'm doing dishes or whatever. And I'd already listened to one of Rachel's. I listened to the Hawaii one yesterday. That's old and nothing exciting there. But then I listened, it came up because I guess I was like, it just went into the next one. And so the one that she posted yesterday, which was called Social Media Anxiety, I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the one we're talking about. Uh, It downloaded on my podcast thing automatically. I listened to the first five minutes in the background while I was doing editing work. So I wasn't even really paying attention. Then I left it alone. And then I went on Reddit and saw that she had deleted it. People were like, where did the podcast go? I was listening to it and it's deleted. Or I was listening to it and, or I tried to listen to it. I couldn't, it's gone and it's been wiped. So I've only listened to the first 10 minutes, (laughs) but last night what I did was I, it was already on my phone, even though she deleted it because I had downloaded it already because I was listening. (laughs) Um, Then I played it on my record, screen record, and just played it, put it out in the other room while I was watching Married at First Sight on Netflix. (laughs) And so an hour went by, I came back, and then now it's here. So I have not listened to the whole thing. Um, From Reddit, someone did listen to it on Reddit, and they said that there was some tea because uh, she talks, uh, even in the intro, she kind of addresses sort of toilet gate a little bit. Um, I also hear from the person on Reddit, they said that she addresses the Maya Angelou controversy. If you're unfamiliar with that, uh, Rachel Hollis's team, this is a long time ago. This is like years ago. Like, but I say years, it's like, you know, between, she became really famous in 2018. So between 2018 and now, (laughs) that's the time span I'm talking about. Um, she like, so not 2020, but before that she had posted still I rise on her Twitter account, I believe. And then someone, you know how they do that on social media? You take a picture of your Twitter account with your profile picture. And then, you know, you've seen that before where they put it on their Instagram. So it's like a two for one. (laughs) You tweet something and then you Instagram that tweet. Um, And uh, she said, still I rise. That was the completion of the whole quote. Um, But that's a very famous Maya Angelou quote. And there was no attribution, so it's just weird. Like, and r- this was not the first time Rachel had posted someone else's quotes and put her name under it. 
um, she was sort of notorious for doing that and coming up with concepts or not even coming up with concepts, like just regurgitating concepts and putting Rachel Hollis at the bottom. Jay Shetty also did that for a long time. He's, they've both since gotten better, but a, a lot of annoyance from me and from others because they're not even, com- these people get paid th- hundreds of thousands of dollars to speak on these stages at these conferences, have their own conferences that cost thousands of dollars. And their, their genius, their, you know, wisdom is just snippets from other people's actual, you know, life work or literature. Um, and then just like, like, how dare you <laughs> just take something that's like, you know, uh, I had a dream. I have a dream that one day by Kia's world, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's silly. It's stupid. It's, it's like in the grand scheme of world issues, it's low on the list, but it just, it's one of those unfortunate things in life. It's like when someone takes credit for something that they didn't do, it just rubs me the wrong way. And I think it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way that this person is profiting off of just stealing other people's stuff and not attributing it at all. And, uh, you know, Rachel and other self-help people seem to not care about it or they only care when they got caught or they only got, they only cared when they got called out on it. They didn't seem to have any problem with, you know, taking someone else's work and just making it seem like it's their own. Um, so, you know, that kind of tells me what type of person they are, what type of creator they are. Um, you know, lack of attribution shows to me that that's like a lack of originality, uh, which is ironic coming from someone who's like, be yourself, girl. Here's a quote that I did not make up. (laughs) Be yourself, unless you want to be better. Then just pretend to be Maya Angelou. Anyways, so um, we have the podcast in its entirety. It's an hour and nine minutes. I'm excited. I think it's going to be juicy because why would you delete it? Okay, so then let me talk about the deletion part. So then it it must have been posted for like, five hours max six maybe I don't know for sure but it was definitely less than 24 hours she usually posts podcasts on Tuesdays this came out obviously on a Thursday so unsure if it was just posted incorrectly because it's supposed to come out later but then if you post like to me if you just post it early like it was a mistake you set the date up on you know the podcast uploader thing the wrong date would you really delete it or would you just leave it and go well whatever I'll add the next one on Tuesday or I'll just tell people on Instagram, like, hey, I uploaded one early. You're welcome. It's a special gift, you know, to you. Uh, and, and it's obviously she recorded it um, because, again, on Reddit, they said that I didn't listen to this part yet. But allegedly in this podcast that we're about to listen to, uh, she brings up the Noah picture that we talked about in my live stream on Tuesday. Tuesday? Whenever that was. Whenever this week was. We went live to talk about Rachel Talk Live and all that stuff. She posted, we also talked about how Rachel posted a photo of her daughter Noah and her son and Noah did not have a shirt on and was like half facing the camera. I found it to be inappropriate to post. The photo was fine, you know, in itself. It's a family photo, but to me at least, posting a picture of your daughter with no top on to a a million and a half, um, 1.5 million people is not cool just because she can't consent to it. She's five years old. First of all, leave her off the internet, please. She's already gone through so much with Dave and all that. So I digress about that, but apparently she addresses it in this. So that happened when I was out of town. So that was last week. So this is recent. This is not an, cause sometimes with her podcast, they come out later. Like she'll record something early April and it'll come out, you know, May 1st because she's talking about the dates and, it doesn't always equate, but this was recorded and posted very recently. So that's kind of confirmation that this is not just sort of like, oh, she made this podcast, you know, six months ago and it just accidentally got posted. This was something that she purposely recorded recently. Okay. I also want to um, just check on briefly on, we don't have to spend too much time on it, but I do want to talk about her Rage Talk tickets because they're officially on sale now. They're officially on sale. Okay. <laughs> uh, can I? Let's see. No. Mm, hold on. Hold on. Let me, give me one second. Let me just 
let me just make this not a, uh, let me make this a square. Let me make myself smaller. I'm just going to, on the fly, be changing stuff around. Okay. Publish. Now to change. Okay. Um, yes, it worked. Sort of. Okay, so, um, I still say preview mode. Back to live mode. We lost, a, we lost my, um, my clouds, but that's okay. So, Rage Talk Live uh, is officially on sale. <clears throat> the tickets are available for everybody now. And from what I can tell, they're not doing great. They're doing kind of better, sort of, than I even anticipated, but they're not doing great. So, okay, this is the first one. This is September 30th. Um, this is the Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama location. You can see Ticketmaster, Rich Talk Live at 7 o'clock on a Friday. So you can go and see. So let's go, let's do floor. You can see, so everything in blue is available. Everything in that light gray is purchased. And the stars are VIP. Now, I don't know if I think, yeah, okay, I think I can still buy those. So anything that has the star looks like it's still available. So those are the silver and the gold packages to get the photo op with Rachel Hollis. So, I mean, I'm, a, I'm actually surprised that this ma amount of people in Alabama would be interested in going to this event. But there's still quite a bit of blue left. So, okay, so just picture like this is the theater and it's, you know, you got a balcony, you got the side seating, you got all that. And there's probably, I don't know, what's a rough estimation? Maybe, I'll, I'll be nice, 100 teats. 100 teats seated. 100 tickets sold uh, in this venue, at least. And this is the most, the, the one coming up first you know, September. So we got all of July, all of August, basically all of September to sell these tickets. So, you know, it could grow. It could. But usually, at least with Rise Conference before, um, those, when they were at their peak, sold out in minutes. Like thousands of spots, minutes were sold out. So um, this is quite a different scenario <laughs> than that. Um, which is maybe why... And I always speculate as to what her reasoning is for things. Um, maybe the lack of ticket sales is a reason why she's in a bad mood. Maybe why she posted this podcast, this allegedly spicy-ish podcast um, for our ears. And then someone said, get this down, <laughs> delete this now. This is a bad look. And she, uh, she changed her tune. So <laughs> that could be it. Or it could be, or it could be, unrelated who knows this is all again speculation S welcome to speculation station i'm your host kia i'm very upset though that this um background is gone now because that was the whole point of me doing it like this okay give me one second everybody what it, did it just disappear everywhere let's see stand by i will not have a show without my without my um, clouds. <laughs> if it was just me cl with clouds. Okay, welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, let's do the same thing, but we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this on this one now. Everyone's like, wow, this is so exciting. Thank you so much. I'm glad I spent my afternoon watching this person on the internet put clouds in her background while the world burns. While the world's burning, oh, we're still turning. The world is burning. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys. You guys are my best friends. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for all of you. Okay. And now we're going to play the podcast. Without further ado, we're going to get to the tea. Because I'm actually really interested to listen to it, too. Because I haven't, like I said, I've heard the first 10 minutes and then I heard it was good and then that's all I got. So uh, we're going to listen to it and let's go now. If you want to be a human being and you want to show up in this space and you want to do it authentically, which I hope that you do because we don't need any more fake stuff on the internet. We got plenty of... Today we are talking... 
is the Rachel Hollis podcast. Okay, that was me. I was just skipping ahead. I don't want to hear about dinosaurs. What happened to dinosaurs? Okay, maybe I do want to hear about that. Here we go. Hi, guys. I am Rachel Hollis, and this is another episode of the Rachel Hollis podcast. Today, we are talking about social media anxiety. More specifically, the anxiety that so many of us feel when it comes to needing to post on social media for work, needing to talk to our communities, needing to put stuff out there because that's part of how we make money, how we support our family, or maybe you're a salesperson inside of a bigger organization, but you need to post, but also feel this immense pressure of you're not sure what to post or you're worried that you're going to post the wrong thing or you're worried that someone's not going to like how you look. They're going to say something negative about like. And this is this part I have heard before. I remember thinking when I heard this yesterday, I was like, OK, this seems again, as per usual with Rachel Hall's content, that this is a, a problem that she's experiencing, but very little, uh, very very little, many other people, uh, a very small amount of people probably have the same issues that she does. There's only a small group of people that uh, make a, a full-time living like she does based on autobiographical self-help <laughs> and basing your life experience or basing the advice that you give to other women on your own personal life experience. That is like maybe five, 10 women in the whole world that do that. Um, without having some sort of like educational background to fall on or some sort of like miracle story where it's like, you know, I lost my arm to a shark and here's my story. Like that's a, a, an event that happened that no one can take away from you. You know, that's like your lessons that you learned from that or some sort of tragedy that you've experienced. But she, Rachel's whole thing is my average life is better than yours. So let me tell you how to live your life to make you a more happy, better, cooler, better woman, whatever her advice is, um, get over yourself, stop apologizing, wash your face, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, this advice, she's like, this is for the women named Rachel Hollis who need to hear this. <laughs> it's like, no one else can really benefit from this advice, but her, as far as I can tell, I'm just based on this intro, like who needs to post for work? that wouldn't have, you know, she, she's going to talk about it in a second. Like if you have a bakery, like you have to post on social media. It's like, yeah, but no one's, I don't think anyone at the bakery is going to really be, you know, offended by the cupcake that you have on sale this week, much different than her posting about, you know, comparing herself to uh, Malala Lucefsi, you know, <laughs> like that's totally two different social media experiences. No one's paying that person or going to the bakery for their hot takes on, you know, the Republican Party. Like, no, you know, it's just not this is only for her. Anyways, that's my whole point. OK, bye. There's so much anxiety in this. And honestly, I am one of the best people to answer this question for you because I have gotten it wrong so many times. So first, let's it's listen to this question that I got from a listener. She called into the hotline and she asked this question. And I was like, that is such a good one because I know she is not the only person wondering about this. So let's listen in. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? My name is Lauren Embry. I'm from Seattle. My question revolves around social media. I love your podcast on anxiety. And it's been helping me a lot. But my question is, in regards to social media, how do you how do you get over anxiety about your posts? Yeah, that's basically my question in a nutshell. So a little bit more context if you want to hear. I'm 27. I have multiple platforms, and I'm a real estate agent, and I just have such crazy anxiety about posting on Facebook specifically. My parents were missionaries, and I was always taught to be like the good girl and just kind of represent the nonprofit really well growing up and kind of like similar to being like a preacher's daughter, I would assume. So how do you get over that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if I was to hear that as a question, not that anyone would ask me my advice, but, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm missing the point. I think of her question sort of, she's a real estate agent 
and she gets anxiety about posting what like what three bedroom two bath is that inducing anxiety or is it like she doesn't want to post on her personal page because she's a real estate agent so she doesn't want to post like her religious beliefs on her real estate page I would probably suggest not to do that either just as a professionalism like don't turn your clients off unless you want to have like a real estate business with only Christian people or only Mormons or whatever, you know, missionary she was in. And I'm just kind of confused. Like, what is the point? So what, that your parents were missionaries? So you're afraid to post about your real estate business? I'm, I'm missing the context a little bit. So that's, that was my thoughts on that. The, to me, it almost, it, it was like, and maybe this is a real caller, but it almost seems like it was a softball lob into Rachel's what she wanted to talk about, like she's pissed about this, you know, social media being canceled. And she's, I think honestly, okay, this is my take. This is what I think so far. Rachel's pissed that she's canceled. She doesn't understand it because she's like, people worship me when I wrote girl, wash your face. These little minuscule, stupid things happen to me that she doesn't really think are a big deal. And, uh, now I'm canceled and I'm trying to sell these tickets and they're not selling and I'm pissed. So she wanted to answer to that somehow. So she had someone on her team or someone call and say, just ask like that, you're, say this and ask me because she wants, she loves that, oh, I'm a good girl. I'm the good girl. She loves that, like thinking like, oh, that was my personality. That is my personality. And now she's going to answer that question. But it, again, like, I don't think that question really is real, but okay, I'll shut up. I know I'm like really rambling today. Thank you. Hopefully soon. Okay. I love this. I love this on all the levels. And I love this question because honestly, it's something that I work on every day and I've been working on for as long as I've been on social, which is maybe 10 years. And for as long as I've been on social media, I have been posting stuff and posting things that worked really well and posting things that miss the mark and posting things that really were the wrong thing to post. And I want to talk about it all. And I want to talk about the anxiety and just the whole deal. But what I want you to ground yourself in right now is that I literally don't know a single person who likes doing social media. I'm sure they exist. Uh, I'm positive they do because it seems impossible. I think when you have to rely on it for business, like your entire career is based on the whims and if the crowd loves you today or they, or they hate you and your business and your monetary success relies on that, yeah, that would be stressful and I would hate that too. But I think there's a lot of people who like using and posting and consuming social media for fun. Like if you're a real estate agent, and you get clients from your boss, like let's say that you don't have to bring in your own clients or you're a, I don't know, an accountant, you have a full-time job and you wanna share photos with your friends and family and you wanna like read celebrities' thoughts and whatever, like I don't, I don't think people are like hating it everywhere. When it comes to business and you're relying on it and you're relying on people liking you and giving you money for your opinions, that's where it starts to get hairy. And I stress about social media you know, and have breaks and stuff. And I'm sort of borderline where I rely on it somewhat. Like this is a social media platform, but it's also more of content creation platform, YouTube. I would say Instagram is more of like the social media back and forth. And there's some days I like it. And there's some days I'm like, ugh, I'm sick of it. So I get what she's saying. But um, I think again, she is the specific case that she, her being liked online is her whole business. So of course there's more pressure for her than the average person that there would be this massive thing that exists in the world um, that there aren't people who love it. But I, in my life, I don't know anybody who uses social media, especially those people who use it to put their work into the world, to create content, those creatives, photographers, artists, singers, celebrities, actors. I, um, I have a really cool job in that I get to meet a lot of people and interview a lot of people and have people in my circle who have much greater followings than I do and do much bigger work with much more impact than I ever will. And behind closed doors, 
sitting around a dinner table having coffee in the morning, I am telling you, I don't know a single person who enjoys it. Okay, and she's made this point before where she's like, you know, she's talked about Dave and her and how people were so mad that her and Dave broke up. And it's just the same thing as like Garth Brooks breaking up with his wife or something. It's a, that's not the right person, I don't think. Whoever broke up with who in the country world recently. And she's like, that's the same thing. Like people get, no one got mad at this country singer for breaking up with his wife. And, you know, they don't care about that. It's like, yeah, but they have a career outside of their personality. Thank you, Betty. Betty Turkan. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Ron. Wait, super chat. Who's Ron? <laughs> Thank you so much, Betty Turkan. I appreciate that. Um, since we're on the, well, just remember, just keep this in mind while we listen to this podcast, Betty. I don't regret anything. Rachel regrets nothing, so. I want to be relatable. <laughs> just want to throw that in there. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so if Rachel was, if Rachel was a, uh, a, a songwriter, if Rachel was a fiction writer, if, you know, primarily, then I would think like, yeah, these people who are upset about her, her life and whatever, like, you know, kind of get over it. Like it's, she's a celebrity for this, you know, her painting. She's a celebrity for her bakery, whatever. But because her status in life is her life advice, then it's up for scrutiny. That's the thing she's not understanding or she understands but is trying to deflect away from. The, you know, the musician, Andy Grammer, who doesn't like posting on social, that's one thing. But he's a singer, songwriter, you know, performer too. There's a light, no one's going to him necessarily to go, Andy Grammer, how do I live my life as a man in, you know, the world? That's what Rachel's promising with her products. He's saying, hey, here's a song I wrote. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. Work. You better work, bitch. You better work. That's what I have to say to Amanda. I'm sorry that you don't have a job. Dave says he's sorry you don't have a job. And... Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? That's Dave. Yeah, so that's the difference to me. So this excuse of, like, no one likes posting on social media. I... You know, okay, I could, I could get behind that. But the difference is Rachel's whole business is social media. It's not just her promoting something else, another facet of her business. Her business is how to post on social media. I'm going to teach you how to post on social Like this podcast, it's so meta because there's so many levels of this. This podcast that she's, we're listening to now that she deleted is a piece of content that is monetarily supported by sponsors and by, you know, her selling tickets to her self-help conferences slash live events um, is about posting to social media. So do you know what I'm saying? Like it's different to compare a musician or a fiction writer to what she does. Okay, that was my point. Back to it. And I think that the reason that most people don't enjoy it is because everyone on some level feels this kind of anxiety. I think if you don't feel some anxiety about doing social media wrong, then you're probably not paying attention. Um, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you have just developed such an incredibly thick skin that it doesn't matter. Or maybe you really truly don't care what other people think. But um, everyone I know struggles with this. So I love that you're asking this question and I love that we're going to talk about it today. And my intention for this time is hopefully to allow everyone listening to leave the conversation with some better plans for how, when to post, what to post, how to do it, how to make sure that it aligns with your values so you don't do something that you regret. One of the biggest regrets in my professional life, or maybe just my life, in total is posting something on the internet that was really tone deaf and not understanding at the time that it was. And, you know, the flip side of that, no BS, is I am a completely different human because I went through the fallout of posting the wrong thing. 
And it forced me into this healing crisis of learning and growing and asking myself better questions and asking like, how the hell did I get this so wrong? And understanding privilege in a way that I hadn't before. I don't know that I would have any of that information if I hadn't gone through that. But at the same time, doing something wrong and getting it wrong a lot, because it's happened more than once, Mm -hmm. especially, and this is like, this is the thing, is I'm sure that there are people who post things on the internet they know will be controversial. I am not one of those people. Literally. Okay. So that I'm assuming because, again, very much like the um, Skinny Confidential podcast where she went on as a guest to clear the air and get it off her chest and, like, come clean about the canceled toilet gate. Now, she doesn't, which bothers me here, doesn't specify. I mean, we can all assume that's what she's talking about. She's talking about toilet gate and we can play toilet gate again if we'd like, because I think it's always important when we're talking about toilet gate to rewatch the TikTok that we're all talking about because, um, it, she can downplay it. She can, she, she likes to change the words that she used. She's like, Oh, I ha- I just was talking about the fact that I had a house cleaner and people got really mad at me for that. And because, you know, people don't like, you know, successful, powerful women in America. They only want to listen to Tony Robbins like me, you know, she'll go down this whole thing where she'll, she'll make it into a gender issue. And people just don't like women who are powerful and have money to have house cleaners. It's like, no, that was not the reason. And I think it's obvious that's not the reason because <laughs> she doesn't say, well, I did call my house cleaner uh, or my, you know, the person who cleans my house, a uh, toilet cleaner. And I specified twice in a 30 second piece that she t- cleans my toilets. That was the problem that everyone had with it. The one of several problems with that TikTok. But I, I almost feel like we should watch it. <laughs> So give me one moment and uh, let me pull it up because I don't want to. Oh, thank you, Bay. Bay says, first time I've ever been able to catch one of your lives and it's giving me life. It's giving me life. <laughs> thank you and welcome. I'm glad you're here. It's a different time because we, you know, we're, we're off schedule because this is deleted yesterday. So uh, before it gets wiped from my phone somehow and Albanese's in the house. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, our, our dog, uh, Rufus, who we're watching. He didn't like that howling. <laughs> Thank you, Albanese. Uh, Albanese says, the gall of her making this podcast after social media fail where her photo was taken down. Yeah, and apparently, I don't know if you were here from the beginning, Albanese, but apparently she addresses that in this uh, podcast and sort of thinks like, Oh, no big deal. That that photo was totally appropriate. It's everyone else's problem, I think. I have not heard it, but that's what the vibe I got from the person who listened to it on Reddit. Um, okay, so let me get Toilet Gate pulled up. Hold on. I have it in a folder because why wouldn't I have it in a folder by this point? Um, and again, this came out in 2021, uh, just a little bit after the divorce. And the divorce was announced in June 2021. So Rachel Hollis's company was sort of on the downturn um, for not that long, really. It was hot, hot, hot. The the divorce, the Maya Angelou stuff happened. That sort of turned people off a little bit. Thank you, Maya. Hippo character starts growing in his eyes, pumping his arms into the air with the word hype pulsating above him. (laughs) Pulsating makes me think. I will actually do something obscene for you. (laughs) Whenever I hear the word pulsating, I always think that. Thank you very much, my R. And um, this is this is for this is the advice, my R. And this is also uh, for Albanese and Bay. This is my advice for everyone here, from us to you. Turns out you can have a full life without putting it all on social media. (laughs) Thanks, Dave. Oh, okay. Where is, hold on everybody. I have it in a folder, but of course now it's like harder to find than just searching it. Okay, hold on everybody. 
Rachel Hollis. Oh, I know that's because I got too too um, cocky. I was like, oh, I have it in a folder. Of course I do. Pfft. Don't. Okay. All right, we got it now. We got it now. We got it now. And we're ready to play it. <laughs> the screenshot, too. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> Look at that freeze frame. My God. I'm having flashbacks. Okay. Wait. Okay. Wait. Was I get, did I get the date wrong? Because this is saying April 21st, 2021. So it must have been. It wasn't 2020, was it? Am I, am I a whole year behind? Okay, so this was posted April 2021. So it must have been then. They must have announced the divorce before that. So maybe it was a year. Let me, let me look at the dates so I don't sound like a total idiot. Um, and here is Toilet Gate. Okay, here we go. Okay, yesterday I was doing a live stream and I mentioned... Hold on. <laughs> thank you, Rochelle. Oh, thank you so much uh, for that. It is 18 American dollars. 18 stinking dollars. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, Rochelle says, today's been rough. Thank you, Kia. Can I slowly buy you a boat? Um, I will slowly buy you a boat. Yes, you can. And you are. <laughs> Thank you very, very, very much. Very much. Okay. Back to Toilet Gate. Yesterday, I was doing a live stream, and I mentioned that there's a sweet woman who comes to my house twice a week and cleans. She's my, my house cleaner. She cleans the toilets. Someone commented and said, you are privileged AF. And I was like, you're right. I'm super freaking privileged, but also I worked my ass off to have the money to have someone come twice a week and clean my toilets. And I told her that. And then she said, well, you're unrelatable. <gasps> what is it about me that made you think I want to be relatable? No, sis. Literally everything I do in my life is to live a life that most people can't relate to. Most people won't work this hard. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. Most people won't fail publicly again, again and again, again just to reach the top of the mountain. Literally every woman I admire in history was unrelatable. If my life is relatable to most people, I'm, I'm doing, doing it wrong. wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. So again... The worst thing I've seen on the internet posted? No, it's not. Is it, you know, hurting people across the world and causing famine and whatever? No, obviously. <laughs> obviously not. There's much worse things on the internet. However, in the self-help context, in, you know, this world that a lot of us are familiar with and women's empowerment movement, is this a type of message that is helpful to women or is hurtful to women? And why are you degrading the sweet woman who cleans my toilets? She cleans my toilets. Like, who cares? Whatever. That's what we're talking about here. So that's the thing that she posted that she, it was tone deaf and she didn't understand at the time. <laughs> and this is a bad screenshot. <laughs> I did her dirty. I'm sorry, Rachel. I did you dirty on that screenshot. But okay, just to remind everybody, refresh everyone's memory. Um, that's what she's referring to. Now, again, she selectively chooses not to get into details, at least as of now, in this podcast when she's discussing it and it sort of bothers me because it's like any new follower could hear like I posted something sort of tone deaf online people just can't get over it it's like of course yeah annoying but if you watch it you go okay I get why people were mad <laughs> I would hope uh oh Emily says bought a CS which is two sadness tank so excited oh love that sound <laughs> And for that, oh, I love that sound. <laughs> oh, I love that sound. So does Emily. Thank you so much, Emily. And Sahari, our Sah Sahari monster, uh, has a white unicorn with rainbow hair. We love unicorns with rainbow hair. I love you. Unicorn with rainbow hair. I love you. So much, <laughs> says Dave. Thank you so much. I appreciate that greatly so okay so let's go back uh just that was a nice refresher i do also i see some comments saying like everyone's memorized it 
it's like there's certain pauses like beat but also most people won't work this hard most people won't go again and again just to reach the top of the mountain <laughs> i should memorize it one day and one day maybe i will i feel like i get close and then i <laughs> lose it a little bit so it was a nice reminder to watch it again okay back to it now just to recatch everyone up she's discussing that video i believe that was her big you know oh, I've changed. I'm a different person since she posted that. Okay, and the timeline was they announced a divorce in June, July of 2020. That toilet gate happened in April 2021. So I have combined all the times and mixed it up. So that is the correct date. So 2020 was the divorce. Toilet gate happened in April 2021. So almost, almost a year from when like people were sort of over her shit or at least questioning her a lot more than they did and then that was the response a year -ish later. Okay. When I've gotten it wrong, I had no freaking idea that I was about to do something that would upset people. And if you doubt it for a second, I mean, just imagine the, the best, goodest, good girl you ever met in your life who was taught to people please she's the biggest nerd she is the goodest good girl that you've ever met she is the most organized person you've ever met she's the least judgmental person you've ever met rachel hollis everybody she is the best or the most in everything who was taught to to do everything perfectly and so any fail feels extra debilitating because it wasn't my intention and there are people it's not fair to say like if you fail you think you're a good person and you make a mistake it it's actually worse for you <laughs> like oh i'm i'm actually the victim because i wanted to help people <laughs> some people not house cleaners because you definitely did not really have her best interest at heart when you made that tiktok so only some people, you want the people who adore you to keep adoring you, right? Like that's who you didn't want to offend, people who are paying you, not the people you are insulting or the whole class of people that you are insulting when you made that TikTok. Who, you know, make a really good living and have really big careers purposely trying to say things that are inflammatory and that's their jam and they're really good at it. and they stir things up, right? That's not what I'm going for. And so the question is, how do I make sure that what I'm going to post on the internet will be received with the intention that I put it into the world with? And the answer is, you can't. It is impossible to always have the work that you do or the content that you create. I wish you would just explain what her intention was. The fact that she won't even address the actual video, the a she has not once that I remember, now correct me if I'm wrong, address the video in any detail other than this, more than what she's giving now, which is this vague, this video that I made was was very tone deaf and I, it was a mistake that I made and it, I, I have privilege. That's all I've heard her say. She didn't say, I said this line. I said, you know, I said Harriet Tubman because of this. Like, I've never heard that breakdown of other than there were some women that I admire that I just wanted to honor by posting that. Like she doesn't go into detail about what her thought process was, what her actual intention was. Cause what's the intention to show off to people how much better you are than them. That's the intention that I got from it. And I was offended by that. So what was your good girl intention with this post? It's insulting to the woman who cleans your house twice a week. Okay, we got that. It's insulting to women who have other things going on other than waking up at 4 a.m. or whatever she says that or don't want to do that. And it's insulting to anyone who is trying to make it in the world without killing themselves. So who were you talking to other than promoting yourself as like, I'm better than everyone else? She, uh, maybe she will talk about it. Who knows? Received by everyone in the way that you intended it. It's impossible. 
And that can be really discouraging. And for a lot of people that can keep them from posting anything at all, or it can keep people posting really generic, Thanks, Bailey. really simple, say nothing kind of posts. Uh, you see, I think celebrities do this a lot. If you notice, they'll um, they'll post a picture and they won't have, they won't write anything or they'll post a picture and they'll just sort of put a heart emoji. They're putting content into the world without saying anything at all because that's the safest play. And it's like, are you really, are you really trying to now make yourself the victim? Like, because people didn't like what I said, toilet gate that tiktok we just liked we just watched because people didn't adore that and love that now and that culture now i can't hear what ben affleck's political beliefs are like that's what we're losing out on celebrity hot takes is that really a loss and is that like we should be it's almost like she's shaming us like you guys are so sensitive because of my you don't like my tiktok where i put down like women in general so now we don't get to hear what christina aguilera has to say how dare you (laughs) like if that's what we're losing i'm fine to lose that Oh, they oh, celebrities only get to post an emoji no one's holding a knife to their throat saying you must post on instagram you know, there's people who have get work in the entertainment industry that don't need to share every thought that they have in their head. That does exist. And there's other careers. If you hate it so much, do something else. It's just this whiny. God, it's so, it's so whiny. I freaking get it. And I've sort of <laughs> grappled with this for a long time because I know, I know with everything in me that if I continue to show up in the world and I continue to do this work and I continue to ask questions and talk about things and tell you guys what I'm reading and tell you what I'm thinking and I know for a fact I'm going to get it wrong and I'm going to get it wrong publicly and I'm going to get pushback from that and it feels so awful when that's not your intention. But the alternative is you don't get to do this work anymore. Yeah, exactly. So why are we doing this podcast right now? That is the trade-off. If you want a life where you get to interview Andy Grammer and you want to do it in a way that like you only have your own life advice to give. She's not going to college or she's not going to some program to learn the best techniques psychologically to help other people like a therapist would go and do. She wants to use her own mind and Google to do this. Okay, so that's her parameters. She's already doing it. Yes, the, 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 the downside, there's a downside to everything is that sometimes she's going to share an opinion she has and people aren't going to like it. Oh, boo fucking who? <laughs> Whether that's talking about your bakery or you're a real estate agent or you're an author or you have your own podcast or you're a coach or, you know, if you want to put stuff out into the world... There are things that you can do to make sure it's aligned, and I'm going to talk about that. But what I want you to understand is if you want to be in this business, if you want to be in the business of putting content onto the internet, onto social media, you have to understand and accept that not everyone's going to get you, that not everyone's going to like you, Mm -hmm. and that there are people who absolutely will tell you all of the things that you did wrong, tell you all the things that you offended them with, and also maybe say stuff that's just like super mean and has nothing to do with your work. The amount of people who've talked about my body, my face, my hair, my um, relationships, my children. Okay. (sighs) That is your business, Rachel. (laughs) Like how many more times can I say this? You wrote a book. They talk about my face. Rachel, you wrote a book called Girl, Wash Your Face. What else are we supposed to talk about? That is your business. You've made millions of dollars, presumably, by talking about your body, by talking about your kids, by showing your kids, by talking about their sexuality, by posting photos of them with no top on. That's how you make money, girl. Okay? So... Saying that, oh, people talk about that online. Where do you think we get the content from? How do you think I know all this shit? It comes from you. 
blame the source. Don't blame the people who are interacting with your product. That's what you want. But she wants 100% adoration. 100%. If you don't love me, don't talk about me. Well, too bad. It's the internet. Sorry. I don't, I don't believe in that. That's not my beliefs. <laughs> that I parent like I've been attacked for everything outside of my work and attacked from what's your work what's your work what is the work what is the work beyond your life your clothes your your vlogging like what is the work I'm missing something I'm missing it the three fiction books that she wrote she hasn't spoken about for like ever <laughs> what she talks about continuously is her rise conference her coaching her three nonfiction books, her podcast where she talks about her life. Is she delusional or am I being gaslit by her right now? And I say that in a joking way. I don't think she's really, well, maybe she is gaslighting her fans. I work and that's not like a woe is me. Like yes, it is. this is what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. I knew I, when I first started posting things, when I was a blogger, back in 2008 when I started, I never knew sort of where it was going because who on earth could have imagined all of the things that social media was going to become. But I've stayed in it and I've stayed in it and it's a big part of my work and my life. And so I have to accept that that's, you take the good with the bad. That being said, I want to talk about how you can shift your perspective about this because it's something that I've worked really hard to do. It's also, I think, really powerful, especially when we contemplate this idea of manifesting and what we put out into the world and what we choose to look at is what we're going to get back. Like we don't attract, it's my favorite Wayne Dyer quote, we don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. And I can look back and see again and again. Can she not see the irony of that statement that that's her favorite quote? We don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. Okay, so you're getting criticism about all these things in your life. No, I don't understand. I don't see that. <laughs> I don't see the irony. Okay. And cool. The times that I have misstepped on social is when I was misaligned or when I was not in a place where I should have been posting in the first place. So that's where we're going to, that's where we're going to start. Fair enough. I guess let's start with what to post. What do you post on social? And I don't really want to grapple this in terms of like what works best if you're a real estate agent or what works best if you're an author, or what works best if you are a teacher, right? You can take a deep dive on all of the different kinds of content that you can put out into the world. And there's so many incredible creators that you can learn from on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube. I like YouTube to learn about different things that you can do, whether it's marketing or different styles of video. I really like YouTube because YouTube has the best search engine. You know, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world after Google. So anything that you want to learn how to do, especially as it pertains to social media, y'all, I would head over there and take a deep dive and be specific to your category, like best social media content for real estate agents 2022. Incredible. You're going to find a wealth of information. You're probably also going to find some really cool people that you can follow and learn from. So when it comes to what type of content, they are the people that you should be learning from. But if we go back to this idea of anxiety so she so okay that just shows if you want to know like what to post as a real estate agent i'm not the person i'm going to post and talk about what i post and what i think i should do as me number one person only person i care about in the world is me and if you're here to listen to me talk about what i want to do then this is the right place if you want to hear about what you should do fuck off <laughs> google something else <laughs> that's, that's the vibe i got and what we post and how you can post things without feeling anxious about it. I like to think of what are things I absolutely believe in. What are things that I'm willing to go to battle over? And I certainly post things where it's like, it's not that serious. But if I'm going to put something out into the world, I really have to slow down and ask myself, 
if this is something that I believe in and if it if I believe in it, am I thinking it through? Am I saying it in the right way to the very best of my ability? But you've got to slow down to do that. One of the worst things that you can do is try and put out social media content for your business in real time. Unless you're like at an event and you're sort of, you know, showing stories or whatever of that day and you're showing the experience or maybe for you, you're a real estate agent. So maybe you're like doing stories on your Instagram or stories on TikTok or whatever of an open house that you're at. That makes sense. It's sort of fresh and energetic and in the moment. But when you're actually trying to say something about who you are or what your work is or what you do or your community or but how often are you doing that? Like, do you, I get, I think the moral question, this is like sort of aside from this podcast. It's like, as a real estate agent, is it even worth it to be like, this is my opinion about my child's education? Maybe personally to a group of people you want to express that to or separately from your business. Like you have a personal account where you talk about your life and your interests. And then you have a real estate business account where you talk about, like I said, open houses, five bedrooms, four baths, like, you know, what type type of tile is best for your, you know, lime scale. I don't know. But she's conflating too because her only business is like herself, she is the business. She has morphed from a human being into a branded commodity. <laughs> She's become an asset in herself. Like her life story and her life in real time, as she says, is the money maker. So again, this is not really a relatable problem to most people. Most people can separate it out. Most people aren't sharing a naked photo of their kid to a million people plus. But she's going to make it seem like this is a, sto a story of women that deal with this problem every day. It's like, no, this is just you at this point. A person who's misguided in life, I think, and doesn't know what to do next. And she's trying to figure it out through helping others. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. To manifest my boat. <laughs> I will slowly buy you a boat. What about a kayak? That's a good first step. Kayak first, boat second. I just have to play this one more time. This is my favorite one. Okay, just one more. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> there will never be a better sound bite than that. I mean, it is manufactured by me. There is, you know, there might be a little editing involved, but it's still so good. It's so good. He was, set, he was setting it up for himself <laughs> to be mm, involved in a fart joke in that one. Okay, um, let's continue whatever, I always think it's best to wait a little bit and really think about what it is. That being said, I still today like do stuff that I can't even believe that the internet is going to get upset about, but they do. I just had this happen. I posted a picture I thought was so beautiful. Um, it was a Polaroid of my daughter. She's brushing her brother's hair. And she's a toddler and she was wearing pants, but she wasn't wearing a shirt. And um, it didn't even show her face. She was sort of in the background, but you could tell no. that she wasn't wearing a shirt. And mm, no, I inaccurate. got... Inaccurate. You can't even see her face. Yes, you can. Thank you, King Intern. Girl, Google it. That's her next book. Girl, just Google it. And it's just a bunch of blank pages. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I'm pissed. That was a bad moment to stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, King Inter. I'm trying to find you a good, uh, a good sound bite for you. And uh, maybe this one's good. I am not emotionally stable. <laughs> That's me. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to show the photo because, you know, obviously for obvious reasons, I'm not going to share that photo. But the picture that she shared was a hundred percent. First of all, if you know anything about Rachel Hollis, you've seen Noah on her page before and you've seen her in the vlogs and you've seen her on Dave's Instagram all over it. Like this girl has been on camera since her birth. I saw her in the hospital room, uh, you know, when her birth mother gave birth to her, there's pictures of Rachel standing next to the birth mother with Noah there. Like there has not been one moment that the Hollises have not shared this girl's life. 
So the fact that like no one could even tell it was Noah is total a thousand percent bullshit. The picture very clearly clearly showed her face, showed her curly hair, showed her with no shirt on, had her twisted towards the camera so you could see her front chest. And it was close enough that you could zoom in and see very close detail. So the fact that she's like, she was in the background as if she was like far away, you know, out in the ocean, you can maybe make out like a figure is not accurate whatsoever. It was immediately obvious that that was a, if you were to post that, she says she's been from the, she's been posting on social media since social media began. Unless you're a complete nimrod you would know that that photo is either going to bring in people who go, oh my God, this is inappropriate. Please take this down. The internet's disgusting with, you know, perverts all over it. Okay. That's going to be half. And the other half is going to be like, oh my God, your head, you guys are so dirty. Like your, your mind's in the gutter. It's beautiful. And the more like, yeah, the more granola, like people are just so gross and just want to wear the rose colored glasses on the internet, which I am not on that camp. So, but I even know if you see a photo like that, you're like, that's going to bring in those two groups of people. If you've been on the internet for any amount of time, that's what happens. So I don't know. The fact that she's like downplaying it and and, and downplaying it, but also changing the facts of it is what bothers me. It's like, just be honest. Like I don't care that I posted my daughter's topless on the internet. I personally don't think that's a problem. Stick to it. At least make a stance. Don't check. Why is she was in the background? No one could even see it. No one could even tell. I don't even know why people are mad. It's like <sighs> so Anyways. much DMs and feedback and people freaking out because they said, even saying it right now is just like making everything in my chest want to explode. You know, like, oh, you're setting your daughter up for being looked at in a sexual way or you're Mm -hmm. setting her up for like you know there are predators on the internet and there are it was so crazy i didn't even respond i just took the picture down after (laughs) i've been doing this for a really long time and i don't even know if that's accurate because she had it up for like well i don't actually i don't want to say that she put it up for two days i saw it i was on vacation so it was harder for me to watch an update and stuff, but I saw it when I was out of town and I believe it was there for at least a day. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then some people said online that they reported it because that's what you can do if there's an inappropriate photo. And a lot of people said that Instagram said they decided to pull it. So if Instagram pulled it, she didn't pull it. I don't know. Let's take her for her word that she pulled it down. But the fact that she did it defiantly and she doesn't agree with it, it's just, I don't understand. What benefit is that helping Noah? What benefit to anyone but maybe your, you know, wallet selling some of these tickets, Rachel, is that picture benefiting? That's your business? This is your business? Posting a photo of your daughter topless online? That's the best you got? Girl boss, you got to find a different business. (sighs) And I think, you know, so much of what I am trying to put out into the world is making sure that anything I put out is a reflection of my core values. And I don't, in my life, in my very real life, I don't think there's anything weird about a a toddler without a shirt on. She's five years old. Is that toddler? She's in school. She's in like kindergarten. That's not a a toddler to me. A toddler's like two, three. She's like old enough to be, you know, in a a book by her dad to be written about and going on, probably going on book tour with him soon. She's old enough to be involved in live stream. She's old enough to be on camera, you know, talking and giving content, producing content for you, being the subject matter of content to be in a vlog, to swim in the ocean in Hawaii and be on camera then, no problem there. But she's a toddler now. Secondly, how about as a society, just generally, every mommy vlogger, person with a kid that's making content for money or anything, just not even for money, just for attention, stop. (laughs) Let's pick an age, 18, then the kid can decide. (laughs) Hey, you know, I don't really want to be on camera. Let them decide at 18. 
if they want to if they want to be in your photos in your content oh, this making me so mad i'm sorry i'm getting angry because it's like so ridiculous like she doesn't have a choice and i hate that children do not have a choice it's unfair at the beach i just i don't think that's weird maybe i'm a hippie um <laughs> i don't know maybe you think that's weird but for me I actually find that really gross because I think um, the image isn't sexual, but the internet has decided that it is. So it's actually adults sexualizing a child, not a child being sexual. That's a whole other conversation. But no one's saying that she's sexual. It's sexualized because you posted it with her with no top on. At this time. And am I the only hippie? It's not being a hippie, Rachel. It's being a responsible parent. Why would you say, if there's even one, a 0.01% chance that there's a predator out there that's going to see that photo and because of the risqueness of it is going to be now obsessed with your daughter and also has access to like probably hundreds of hours of content that you've involved her in, pictures online, the blog, her books, on Dave's profile. There's so much content which she is featured do you want that person to go down that rabbit hole and now have a, a, a an obsession with your daughter if there's even one percent chance of that why would you even take the risk because she doesn't care she wants that money <laughs> thank you petra i appreciate that very 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 much i'm sorry i was in the middle of screaming at rachel during that super chat i do appreciate it and it, i'm getting the vibes of I don't regret anything. From Rachel right now. And definitely not the vibes of... I want to be relatable. I can't relate to this. Sorry, Rach. Sorry. Um, and I have to say that I am becoming... I am not emotionally stable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Petra, for real. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Let's continue. Same time, I was like, well, I'm not about to debate this and I'm not about to have her be the involved in that at all. So I just pulled the picture down. You did involve her, Rachel, by posting it. You involved her the second that she was born, like I said, in all of this shit. You can say all you want, like, oh, my kids are not involved. Why are you putting them on your public profile? They're involved. And I... In pulling the picture down, I was like, and I am reminded why I don't post pictures of my kids. You post pictures of your kids all the time. Also, it's like she wants to be like, oh, well, I, I didn't want to, but I pulled it down. So now I should be like held up as this, you know, like saint. Like, oh, I did what I didn't want to do. <laughs> oh, she, she, she had to take it down. Oh, my gosh. Because the Internet's so mean and crazy. Oh. Man, I just feel so, I just, my heart breaks for Rachel, the only hippie. If anyone should be feeling bad for it, it's Noah, her daughter. Anymore. I got away from that for a long time. I didn't post anything of them. And I wanted to because my work so often is me sharing my life and they are the biggest thing in my life. And so it, it's a bit weird sometimes to, have social media that goes out or have a feed where I'm like, God, this is a lot of pictures of me. It feels like me, 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 me. And I don't like that. Shut up, Rachel. That's all you care about. Um, thank you, Rahel Seifu. M. Rahel, is that correct? How I pronounce it? I appreciate that. Um, I don't think you're from Canada, but I haven't played this one today. So let's, let's give a shout out. How about that, M. Rahel, to all of the Canadians here right now? We have a lot of really great friends from Canada. <laughs> That's our message to everyone out there. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm, if this, is a, this is a bad podcast. I understand why she pulled it now. I get it. Because this makes her look like an idiot. I just want to share my kids because I don't like it just being me. However, I wrote three books about my life. My entire podcast, including this episode, is about my life and my feelings. My whole business and brand is about me, what I think, how you can be more like me. And um, But I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Woe is me. I made this career. I made my bed. Now I sleep in it. Mm. Mm. I don't like it. I don't like when people don't like when I post whatever the fuck I want at any time. Oh. I hate consequences. I hate it. Oh. Okay, sorry. But at the same time, I was like, yep, this is why I don't do it. 
So that's a reminder Good. and just Glad a, a sort of readjustment in my gut. And it does make me sad. And I don't know if you guys will even get this, but I have been in relationship with this community, this podcast community I've been in relationship with since 2017. Um, a lot of my online community I've been in relationship with since 2008. So I have very long lasting relationships with people here on social media. She doesn't understand what a relationship is. A relationship is two people or more relating to each other in some sort of equality. I give a little, you give a little. I give a little, you give a little. Back and forth into eternity. You give, 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 give all of your own opinion and never receive anyone else's feedback. Because when you give it, she don't want to hear it. That's not a relationship. That's a dictatorship. Media. And uh, so many of you, and you know who you are, you've come to my conferences and my book signings and you're going to come see me on tour. You are the people that are... The people who pay me money. That's who I'm concerned with. This is what that means. Are, you know, flagged in my DMs because you're my people and you've been with me for a long time. And so many of you prayed for... Um, and everyone, from everyone new that's here coming in late... Um, she initially posted this yesterday and she deleted it yesterday. So it was, uh, I think, I don't know the exact time, but I noticed it around like 1 or 2 p.m. and it was deleted by 9 p.m. yesterday. You know, my adoption journey and were celebrated with me all around the world when I adopted my daughter and have been such a part of my motherhood experience. I know that maybe sounds weird, but it's true. And so when I posted, I just wanted to be like, Oh, look, this is so beautiful. I thought it was so beautiful. And, but people will twist things, right? That's, that's what I started out saying is that you can't control the way someone receives what you posted because Agreed. we're, none of us are looking at things through the lens of other people. We don't see life as it is. We see life as we are. We look at life through the lens of what we think is okay. And I okay. think it's super normal. I think if there was a four-year-old or a five-year-old little boy without a shirt on, no one would say anything. And so I think it's pretty weird that because it's a girl, it somehow... Okay, Rachel, how about you post a picture of yourself topless and see how that goes? Because, you know, I've seen Dave topless and he's in Hawaii with no shirt on. So why don't you post a photo of yourself topless and then let's have this conversation. If it doesn't matter, if gender doesn't matter anymore with that, with posting online, fine. If that's what your belief is, great. Make a statement. Don't involve your child that has no choice. Wrong. Again, not going to get into that conversation, but um, yeah, I don't have control over how it's received and you have to decide when something like that happens. Do you want to get in a debate? Do you want to fight or argue over things? Is this a situation where you need to learn from the experience? Is this a situation where you need to take something on board and change your perspective? Um, and I've certainly had things like that where I've posted something, didn't realize how it would offend people. And then when I learned that it was offensive to them, I was like, oh, dang. Yeah, I wasn't considering your perspective of the world at all. I was just speaking through my lens. And I don't think that that makes any of us wrong or bad. I think that makes us human. And that is the biggest issue with social media is that we want to be social, right? And we want to show our lives. But there is, over the last several years, this really weird narrative that says that nobody's allowed to get it wrong. <laughs> you know, that we have to do everything perfect. Rachel, we thought you were perfect. What happened? <laughs> Rachel, when I read Girl Wash Your Face, you said that you bought a Louis Vuitton bag and that you had figured it out. I just don't know why you're making mistakes. <laughs> That's what I do as a Rachel Hollis fan. <laughs> Again, no one wants you to be perfect. The only person that wants you to be perfect is you. The only person who thinks you're perfect is you. <laughs> 
No one's expecting that. Stop projecting on all of us. And if you get it wrong, you're canceled and you're done forever. And I just think it's so... That's capitalism, baby. Sorry. (laughs) Do something else. How about that? Do something else. Try something else. You did this already. It worked for a little and then it didn't. That's not our fault. That's capitalism. I don't like it either. (laughs) But here we are. Wild because who on earth would want to live in a world where you're judged forever and ever based on a mistake that you made years ago, not on your best day. (laughs) It was in 2021. (laughs) This is not from 1995 where you said something or, you know, dressed up in a costume that was not, you know, appropriate. It's not that. It was a year. And what are we in July, June? So one year, April, May, a year and two months, years ago, that's not years, that's one year plus two months. And where's, I'm still waiting on the explanation of like, here's how I've changed. Here's what I'm doing differently. So amazing to me. And so amazing. that's what's out there. And that can keep so many creators from pushing their content into the world. And that content can be deeply helpful to so many people, or frankly, it could be deeply helpful to one person, or maybe putting your content out there is helpful to you. It helps your spirit and your soul. And if it's helpful, why on earth do we allow one voice or five voices or a thousand voices of negativity? I'm just making up numbers (laughs) to drown out all of the positive feedback. It's because probably if you're falling into that, it's because you were raised to believe that other people define you. This is a, a like a wild realization I've had lately. I'm just gonna let it play. And it's so funny because it is completely dependent on my interaction with this social media beast, right? So what happened with the picture last weekend is something that in the past would have, I would have. Thank you, Mai. Mai asks, is she still answering the caller's question? Yes. (laughs) The preacher's daughter uh, who called in, um, or I guess the daughter of missionaries, who asked about, I have anxiety posting about my real estate business. Do you have any advice? This is so relevant, so relevant. (laughs) I'm still here waiting. Um, Should I talk about the bedrooms or the bathrooms first? Rachel's like, so let me tell you about my cancellation. (laughs) God. Yeah, I totally, so I didn't hear this part yet. So from 10 minutes on, I haven't heard. So this is all like new to me and it's, I totally get why she deleted it. But isn't that ironic? Isn't this the biggest irony ever? She's explaining why she doesn't want to delete things and because she stands by things. She doesn't want to be like silenced. She wants to have like free speech all of a sudden. Okay, great, wonderful. I'm all about free speech. The thing is too, she's like, isn't it horrible that these negativity, this negative, these negative voices online are, you know, drowning out or, or preventing people from sharing their opinions? It's like, what about those negative voices? That's an opinion too. Me making this video and making content is helping people, I hope, in some capacity, at least take a look and say, maybe I shouldn't spend a thousand dollars on that conference next year. I'd probably be better to put that into therapy or put that into my own business or do something else because these people that claim they have all the answers are really, really messed up in a lot of ways. And here's why. So because her content is perceived as positive, it has a higher value. And so my content that's perceived as negative should not exist. But isn't that against the whole principle of free speech that we're talking about here too? About like, oh, well, you can't, I can't worry about people. I'm not going to worry about Rachel Hollis getting mad at the content that I'm making. Same as she shouldn't get mad at the content I'm making. If I was to use the stuff that she's talking about now, the rules that she's placed on herself, the realization she's had, these big epiphanies that she allegedly has just had. Okay, so, but she doesn't see it unless it's from her own perspective, her own lens. 
Shocking. Okay, sorry. On into a spiral. And because the the notes, then the, you think people say mean things in comments. You should see what they say in DMs. But the nasty notes are like, what a piece of shit I am as a mom. And I've been getting that from people on the internet for as long as I've been doing this work. And that would send me into a tailspin because I, I didn't understand this earlier in my life, but I really was raised that th what other people said about me was my truth. So if I didn't have, if every, Thank you, King Intern. King Intern says, I post my content all the time for my self-rage. The difference is that I'm a nobody and I don't say stupid stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Dave has good advice once again for us. Turns out you can have a full life without putting it all on social media. You can have a whole business without putting it on social media too. It's really, it's really possible. I have, uh, this is a side note. I have not posted one time about my business, my video production business since probably... Okay, I lied. I have posted a couple photos, but like an actual thing of like, hey, this is what I'm doing and hire me, whatever. Does not matter. I get clients from one client, asks another client, hey, I need somebody. Do you have anyone that does video? And they're like, yeah, this girl does it. Okay, me. <laughs> She's good. My reputation in that space and doing good work for clients is enough. I don't need to post on social media. I haven't. In like two years, I've made like five posts semi-related to like maybe it's a behind the scenes photo so this is you don't need it and if you, if you want to be an influencer of course you have to be on instagram but that's like one percent of of all one one percent it's like zero point zero point zero point one percent of all jobs available <sighs> i'm annoyed <laughs> one didn't think that i was good if everyone didn't think that i was smart or pretty or you know, a good daughter or a good Christian or a good member of the community, if they didn't think that, then it, it wasn't true. I grew up. Also, she was one of her quotes that she in Girl, Wash Your Face attributes to her therapist, Denise, that I just read this like today, about other people's opinions are none of your business. Now, later on, she posted that quote on her Instagram, I believe, and attributed it to herself. Okay, in the book, she says it was something that her therapist had told her. That doesn't apply anymore. She's just like, this is a new revelation I just had. It's like you wrote a book in 2018 where you literally were like, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. And this is my advice to you as well. But then she's saying, like, I didn't follow that. <laughs> I don't follow that. But now I've learned that I should. Okay. Thanks. Being defined by the opinions of others. <sighs> and that means that one negative comment on social media can literally readjust the way that I think about myself, which is freaking crazy. But what I've learned to step back and ask is like, is that true? Is that true? Are you a bad mom? I'm like, no, I am a really good mom. And I know I'm a really good mom because I work my butt off to be a really good mom because my kids are fantastic human beings because I have held a lot together to keep our it's like why don't why do we uh, I don't know I mean I guess like I don't think she's a abusive mom I don't think she's hurting her children physically I think there's a lot to say for what social media and being exposed at that young of an age can do to kids. But what does being a good mom even mean anymore? Why do we have to put these labels, good mom, bad mom, on ourselves and each other anyways? Maybe that's the lesson that we can all glean from this. It's like, am I a good mom? It's like, what does that even mean? Do you make mistakes? Yes. Okay, so, so what if I made a, what's the threshold of mistake I'm allowed to make into where I go from good mom to bad mom? And there, it's different for everybody. So why even bother putting the label on ourselves and on, on others? A. Smith, thank you so much for that. 18 stinking dollars. I love how there's like the numbers. I wish, I wish the, the, the number was um, a million. So everyone would set numbers. No, <laughs> it is 18 American dollars. It's only 1 million stinking dollars. Everyone's just sending a million dollars every day. That would be nice. That would be so 
Uh, A. Smith says, here's 18 American dollars for making my dark day a little brighter by distracting me with Hollisville stuff. You're welcome. We all need a distraction and Rach delivers. Rach definitely delivered today. Rach? And by deleting it, it just made it that much more juicy to listen to. <laughs> that wasn't nice. I'm not here to be nice today, obviously. I'm here to be a bitch. I'm here to... Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Family going over the last five years. I know I'm a good mom. And... Wait, what? Let me go back. Just a quick second, because if you remember correctly, uh, Noah's five. <sighs> it, it bothers me. That's another thing, too. It's like, she says, like, for the last five years, me and Dave had had all these issues and problems. It's like, why did you adopt a child then? You know, I think she's doing fine. Hopefully, knock on wood, we hope that Noah turns out great. But, you know... It's, she took a risk, and I think she should acknowledge it a little bit more, that her and Dave, if they're having so many marital problems, to take on a fourth child at that time may not have been the best move for everyone involved. But I think at the time she thought, hey, this is the way to make content. This is the way I can continue to grow my brand. The opinion of a random stranger on the internet doesn't get to decide especially something they don't know about me. And the same is true for you. But the only way it's possible for you to believe that is you have to know who you are in real life, in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart, who are you? Because if you don't know who you are, you will let the public perception define it. And that can be an amazing thing when stuff is working out, right? That can be an amazing thing. It's this really dangerous sort of slippery slope because I look back on pictures of myself three years ago, four years ago, and I'm like, who is that woman? Who is that? <laughs> I, I don't know if any of you are going to um, be f like have an experience like this, but Oops. when you, here's all my info, when it wasn't successful, sorry, <laughs> important. And this work is valuable. And this work is what I think I was put here to do at this point in my life. Like I'm doing, I'm walking in my purpose, but it used to be a lot more fun. And I just, I've been wondering lately, like, when did it stop being fun? And today, literally this morning, before I ever heard this voice memo. Okay, hold on. Everyone I stop. Really <laughs> Everyone hold. Let me hold. I'm going to play that part because I missed something, but it shows like all my information. So let me just play the audio part of that. I don't want to skip over it because. Okay, wait, it's right here. All right, we're going to start this part again. I, I don't know if any of you are going to um, be f like have an experience like this, but when you experience a certain type of success on social media or you experience a certain type of, of success in a public way, I maybe someone stronger than me, but I don't I didn't know how to not be swept up in what other people wanted me to be. I had this, uh, um, I've been unpacking a question for myself that I, is so powerful. This work used to be a lot more fun. <laughs> used to be a lot more fun. Probably when you were married to Dave and he was, you know, financially supporting you and you could make mistakes and pivot and try different things and no one was really watching your brand so you could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, I'm sure it was more fun. And it, I don't know. And I'm trying to unpack and understand when it stopped being fun. Because I want to get back to it being fun. Now, this work that I get to do is so 
bless, such a blessing. It's so lucky that I get to do this work. And this work is important and this work is valuable. Is and this work is... Interv again, like I'll use example, interviewing Andy Grammer about his new song. Is that important? Maybe. Or maybe there's a million other people who are doing it. And the thing that you find very important is sh her being able to say, like, I've interviewed Andy Grammer. That's what she finds important. Not the actual work itself, because I think we could all agree, like, yeah, maybe it's important in some ways. It's not negative. It's not a bad thing to have someone interview him. But what value does she really bring the conversation? Not much, in my opinion. She does as much as, like, the, the next person would probably do. What she finds valuable is the fact that she can say, I interview celebrities. So therefore people respect me. So therefore people like me and think I'm cool. And therefore they're gonna buy my book. And therefore they're gonna go to my conference and listen to my advice about how to be a better woman like me. That's the important part to her, not the work. What I think I was put here to do at this point in my life, like I'm doing, I'm walking in my purpose. But it used to be a lot more fun. And I just, I've been wondering lately, like, when did it stop being fun? And today, literally this morning, before I ever heard this voice memo, I realized what the answer was. It was so much fun when it wasn't successful. <laughs> it was so fun to... Because it could be a hobby, which is something you should probably get. <laughs> Yes, that's the whole thing. Okay, again, like, oh my God, like, this is the whole problem with this industry. They'll all say, what, what do you want to do in your life? What's your purpose in life? What is your God-given purpose on this earth? And it's like, oh, to make crochet coasters. Oh, girlfriend, okay, let's get you on Etsy. Let's get you an Instagram. Let's get you to buy my course to learn how to blow this up so you can make a zillion trillion dollars. You can get a boob job like me. You can then post more on Instagram, sell more coasters, get your kids to Hawaii. This is the dream. And now she's like, it's a nightmare. No shit. We all knew that. <laughs> In some way, deep down, we all knew that it wasn't that good. Look at celebrities. Look at big celebrities. We're like, why, why do they do drugs? Why do they overdose and die? Why does that happen? They have everything. Why, why do people who travel the world and own companies and still deal with depression? Explain that. They're like, no, no, no. Don't look at that. Don't think about that stuff. Focus on the positives. Focus only on the positives. Don't look at these outlying cases that are becoming more and more the norm. This is like so obvious. Oh, when you have to pay employees and they're depending on your business to pay their mortgage, it becomes less fun. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> and like delivering this information of it as if it's like, you guys, like I've just discovered like, you know, hydrogen mixed with two oxygens it's a really good product that will probably be very good for you to consume on a daily basis. I'm just, I'm mind blown. I just discovered this. Speaking of. Be an author and write books that 10 people read. It was so fun to be a speaker that nobody knew who I was or what I was doing. It was so fun to be someone creating content, you know, to have a blog and to put content. And the, th the whole thing is like, she's like, just take a look around. First of all, this was posted yesterday, so I guess we can't say, you know, like, well, she didn't know what today was going to bring. But, like, the world is crumbling in so many different ways. And yes, I know everyone's experience is important, and I don't want to, you know, minimize someone's real beliefs and feelings about their life. You know, I'm not saying, like, you have to be poor to be able to express yourself in a negative way. I don't believe that. But... On this grand scheme of things, the fact that you don't find your multi-million job, dollar job fun anymore, I don't care. <laughs> Go talk to someone who doesn't have a job that would kill to have even a uh, livable wage at this point in time. Like, I, I'm all about it. Like, have your feelings. But if you expect me to really sympathize with that, I ain't gonna do it. Okay. On the internet and like, 
six people cared. <laughs> it was so fun because it was only about the creation. It wasn't about the success. If you've never been successful at anything, then you only keep going and you only keep producing because you love it and you think that maybe it might be helpful to someone out in the world. And if one person sends you a message on Facebook in 2008 and tells you that they made your recipe for chicken stir fry and that their kids actually ate it, you pee your pants because you're like, holy crap, I helped a stranger. That's amazing. So what's the, okay, then, so I hope that, and this is like, we're like halfway through, I'm hoping that she says, so basically my whole philosophy on life has been wrong. Now I figured out that I actually don't need a big dream and need to achieve so, so much in my life to feel like I'm a competent person allowed to take up space in this world. And I actually am going to go and chill in Hawaii and just get off the internet because this is what I found is the best thing for me right now. That's what I'm hoping comes next. I have doubts that that will happen, but. And back in the day, we did not know what we were doing and it was beautiful. And we made stuff that was total crap and it was amazing. And we just fell in love with the process. We fell in love with the work. And this is so powerful to me. I'm like, I swear to everything that I hold dear, I am going to get back to this place. I'm going to get back to this place of falling in love with the process because once you have a little bit of success, once you post something that like gets a hundred more likes than the last post did, once you start, you start chasing the success instead of chasing the joy. You start trying to win everything instead of focusing on how can you evolve? How can you grow? How can you do things that are different? I think we see this a lot now. I think people were making really interesting art and music and cool videos. They were doing so much stuff. And now everyone is so terrified of getting it wrong that people have stopped experimenting because experimenting has the potential to get you in trouble. And it just sucks because... It just sucks because I can't offend people anymore. I just want to tell it how it is. And people, people are getting in the way of that. Rachel, <laughs> let me tell you. And me too. This is for me as well. This is, my, this is for myself to hear this too. There's a million other jobs you can do uh, other than trying to convince people of your point of view. That's kind of what we're doing. And I'm not saying like I'm trying to persuade everyone to believe what I believe. And if you don't believe what I believe 100%, then get out. I'm not saying that. But obviously I'm here with a perspective and a point of view. And I think it's important that if people are open-minded to what I have to say and think, then that's a benefit. And I do want to bring more people into the fold and go, look, like self-help has got a lot of issues. <laughs> Spirituality has got a lot of issues. The industry of life coaching has a lot of issues. Let's take a look at it and regulate it a little bit. Let's take a look at it and not give our money to it. That's my perspective. And I am trying to convince people through my content in some way. And she's doing the same thing with her perspective on choosing joy and being positive all the time and being a woman who works and, you know, doesn't want to be just a stay at home mom or whatever her perspective is. Okay. That's what should, and I think was driving her at one point, but she got so far away from that chasing the Louis Vuitton bag and the first class only and the Hawaiian vacations and stuff. Yes, she got off course. So listen to what you're saying and go do something else. The experiment for most people. And it's like, I don't believe what she says. Like, oh, I just can't say anything anymore. I think a lot of people are saying more things than ever before. I think she's afraid to get canceled again because she saw how detrimental it can be when you really make a mistake, how devastating it is, how Rise went from thousands in an arena to maybe, maybe a hundred at being nice. She saw how far you can fall. This is not a new concept. She's just coming to the realization that it's true and happens. All right, I'm sorry. Back. Well, I don't think was ever intended to be offensive. 
And honestly, I think back to 2009 and 2010, like I remember so distinctly the first time that I learned a lesson um, from posting something on social. I still, I like, it is locked in my brain. I don't remember when this was, early days on Facebook. And I posted a video where I looked, I, I looked sort of scruffy. It was the morning. And I said, jokingly, I thought jokingly, I said, oh, I, I look terrible. I look like a homeless person. And it's just, it, I just said. I wasn't around for that one. I didn't know that happened. <laughs> God. I mean, yeah, that's a little distasteful. Is toilet gate worse? Yes. I mean, I didn't see this video. Maybe she's lying about it because she lied about toilet gate too. So maybe it's actually worse than it's, it seems. Is that a nice thing to say? No, it's not. Do you want people to think that's nice? I don't know. What do you want from it? Like, okay. It, and I didn't think anything of it. And I had posted the video and later I had two comments from two different women, like so much love teaching me a lesson, not mean, not telling me that I was a piece of crap, not telling me that I was a failure. They were like, Hey, Rach, have you ever considered how harsh those words are that people who are homeless do not have control of that? And that you from a place of privilege, you're making fun. Like they just, they schooled me and they educated me, but it was like so healthy and from such a place of love. And I was like, Oh my gosh. No, you guys, honestly, I had never thought of that before. Thank you so much. I have never forgotten. I've never said anything like that since I learned and I grew and I evolved. That's what social used to be. Okay. <laughs> what utopia did you live in? And I'm not saying that I love negative comments and that being like, you know, mean and direct and rude on a comment is somehow benefiting the world. I'm not saying that. But in order to learn a lesson, it must be delivered to you in a Tiffany's box. That's another point of privilege. Because just because you didn't like the way someone delivered the message, the message still remains, you made a mistake. And the fact that she handled things the way she handled them with toilet gate and she like didn't apologize, didn't take it down, then took down the apology, put a new apology up, the way she deleted comments, like that was where you went off the rails. Not the actual, people could, you know, I think people can forgive. I've been willing to forgive her this whole time if certain things were addressed and worked on. But the longer that it doesn't, it just shows you really only are following the money and hoping that people forget and are now coming to the conclusion like, oh, shit, people don't forget. And I think that that's more a representation of what real life looks like. If you're in a real life conversation with another human being and they say something that's not OK, you can be like, oh, hey, Sarah, like we don't say that word. And just so you know, like my friend has a child who is dealing with that. And so that's not, um, here's why it's like really hurtful to their hearts and normal human beings are like, Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I didn't, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's a beautiful discourse and conversation that we get to have in real life that doesn't necessarily always happen now in the world of social media today. So what on earth do you post to make sure that... Or how about you get over it? <laughs> she claims that she never read a comment in her life. She's like, I don't read DMs. I don't read comments. So anytime that anyone posts anything, based on her own admissions, they would think that the team is reading it, not her. So now all of a sudden she's like, no, I actually do read comments. I actually do read DMs. And I'm very offended by them. And I wish people would just be nicer to me. It's like, okay, well, now you got to give people time to realize that you do read them. Number one. And number two, it's like, why don't you get a little bit thicker skin, like you said in the beginning of this podcast, and take, like she says as well, she says this has been saying this recently, like, take what you want from it and leave the rest. How about that? That's a little bit easier than changing the entire internet's discourse. People have tried. It's not going to work. It's aligned. The first thing I think you go back to is this idea that you have to know yourself and you have to know what you stand for. And, you know, there's a lot of marketing experts out there who can talk to you about your brand and how to build a brand. Thank you, Lucy. Lucy says, thank you for your content, Kia. You're welcome.
<laughs> You're so welcome. We're best friends. We're best friends. I'm rooting for you and I love you. But don't tell me that I've done anything wrong unless you tell me in the nicest possible way. And also, I don't read comments. And also, um, don't come up to me because I don't want to talk to you. I need my space. But if you want to come talk to me, it's $300. And I'll be in Birmingham and Minneapolis. My name's Rachel. I'm the only hippie. But also... I'm also, I'm, I don't want any more followers. I liked it better when I had three. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring that uh, impersonation. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to shut up a little bit more because I feel like I've been talking this whole time. And I really hate, I hate the idea of the personal brand. I'm going to be honest. Because the Ugh. more successful I became, Brother. the more other people were in charge of my personal brand. And I felt about? like that was okay because I didn't know what I was doing. And I have a very bad habit and the universe keeps trying to teach me this lesson, but I have a very bad habit of thinking that people who are experts or people who are older or people who have more experience know better than I do. So often in the past, even if something would feel wrong in my spirit, I would agree to it because I was like, well, they know better. And so the more successful I got, the more people sort of took over what the brand was. And that showed up in every way. That showed up in the kind of videos and social content that were posted. That showed up in the clothes that I wore. That show up in how my hair was done. Um, what you're seeing today, if you're, if you're looking at this on YouTube, is a very good representation of my real very real self my isn't the person who styles you like your best friend best and only friend in life rosie the stylist so oh you don't like the clothes that she styled you in isn't that like a you hired her because she's your friend so she got it wrong your best friend in this world got it wrong so who else would possibly get it better i hate personal brand that is what your entire life is a personal brand, a lifestyle brand. <sighs> I just can't believe like I'm hearing this right now. Like I'm not shocked cause like nothing she says shocks me anymore, but like, I just wonder like, does she, is she delusional or does she just not hear herself? And she thinks like, oh no, no, this is what I believe. Oh, who, and also who, like you were the CEO, your husband was the CEO for like a couple months and he is your husband. So he doesn't know you either. I guess that's what she says now, but like, who is writing, like who created the Rachel Hollis, like idealized version if it wasn't her, she wrote every word of those books. So you're saying that those books were like written by someone else because they knew branding better. Your autobiog autobiography, someone else wrote that and came up with the concept the clothes you wore, the hair you had, I just don't buy it. Can't see me. I'm wearing a bun. I have a little bit of makeup on. Um, my eyebrows are penciled in. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm wearing a lot of jewelry and I'm wearing a, a vintage t-shirt. And this is a very strong representation of what I look like if you run into me in real life. And if you've ever run into me in real life, you're like, yeah, that's what. She literally talked about in Girl, Wash Your Face. She said that she goes, she shows up to her son who now is in high school, but back then was like in third grade or no, it's not true. I don't know. One of her sons, she's like, I, she was talking about one of her sons. She, she goes and volunteers. She doesn't like to volunteer at the classroom, but she does it sometimes. And if she does it, she wears a blazer and heels and everyone looks at her and judges her because she's a working mom. So whose fault is this again? Like, okay, how, I just don't like the blame put on other people. Other people wanted me to wear these things. Says who? You are the one who came out in these outfits and said, this is who I am. And if people liked you for that, that's not their fault. She's blaming them like, well, you should have, you should have rejected me when I wore those, you know, suits and dresses and whatever. And half the time at Rye, she was wearing like sweatpants anyways, like yoga pants and wore band t-shirts. So this is like what I remember seeing her in anyways. Now she doesn't wear makeup, okay, that's good. But who's asking you for that? Who asked you to put makeup on? That's your own choice. Ah, oh, this is annoying. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Rachel annoying. looked like she was wearing jeans and a t-shirt and 
if she had makeup on, it was just like her eyebrows. So when I look back at the quote unquote brand two years ago, I don't know who that is. You know, it was so much makeup. It was such big hair. It was such big lashes. It was when we don't know what we're doing. It's like she talks about like, I love lashes. I'm a girl who loves lashes. I, that's in her book. So that's all a lie. All of that's a lie. So what, what is the content that's authentic? Nothing, apparently. Or when we're not confident or when we don't know ourselves, we tend to gravitate to what other people are doing or what other people think is a really great idea and here and also i'm offended <laughs> what she's describing is what i'm is my personal brand but if no one likes it then i'm gonna blame you all for not rejecting me immediately <laughs> don't describe me rachel it's the thing guys that brand worked that brand worked lots of people liked her lots of people really dug all those things and then there would be this massive disconnect, right? So like if I would get on a story just to like talk to you guys because something was on my heart, you'd see me with no makeup in a t-shirt with like my rosacea popping and, you know, pimples on my chin. And then I would get so much flack. Like, oh, what, what, you know, because it, there was a cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is, is that we as human beings can't really hold two competing thoughts in our head at the same time. So if your personal brand is not actually who you are as a person, there's always going to be this disconnect because you feel like you've got to perform or you've got to be a certain way in order to show up in the world. Just admit that you are chasing the money and anything, your personal beliefs and your authenticity, your relatability, that's like, okay, hold on. Here, girl, I have the, um, I have uh, girl wash your face in the bathroom, so I can't grab it right now. This is girl, stop apologizing, okay? Um, it's a shame-free plan for embracing and achieving your, okay, uh, let's see. I want to find this is more about how she's helping others but I want to see about like her as an author okay this is what it says here's the the book sleeve right this I'm just going to read it what it says um, as a best-selling author and wildly successful lifestyle influencer, she has built a global social media fan base in the millions. She's a proud working mama of four and a big fan of the small town in Texas Hill Country that the Hollis family calls home. Okay, no, that's not as, as much. Let me find, hold on. I just want to read the thing, the, the, the sales copy again. Sorry if you're already here and I read this last time, but um, the thing that she's selling right now, her Rach Talk Live... And just hear how she describes the brand, uh, like what she stands for, right? Like, okay, if you're going to go see her live in Alabama, what might you expect to see and to hear? Okay, let me get one second. Because I'm annoyed. I'm so annoyed. And I'm annoyed, annoyed. I am annoyed. Um, okay, more info. Okay, stand by. Why can't I read what it's about? <sighs> Hold on. Live Nation. Okay, I know I'm taking too much time. Sorry, everybody. I just want to read her. And 20, because she's like, this, what I was canceled for was so many years ago, AKA 2021. Uh, I'm so different. I'm so different than that now. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna have to go to my history and find the thing that I did the other day because it literally was like her relatability and her, you know, sl knee slapping uh, comedy is so funny. Hold on. I you talk live. Rage Talk Live, Rage Talk Live. I'm looking at my history folder right now. Okay, whatever. 
Live Nation, Rachel Hollis. Why can't I see it? Because I was listening to her exclusive playlist. <laughs> Where is that again? And also, let's go on Instagram. Okay, I'll look at it from the... Um, Okay, what is the thing in Charlotte? Or sorry, Charleston, not Charlotte. The North Charleston Performing Arts Center. Okay, sorry everybody. This one. Okay, we're so close. We're so close to getting this to be satisfactory. Okay. All right, here is the way that Rachel describes her her brand these days the self-care revolution has begun best-selling author motivational speaker and podcast host miss rachel hollis is bringing her relatable hilarious lifestyle advice to the north charleston pack whatever blah, blah 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 okay that's all i wanted to accomplish just reading that her relatable lifestyle advice that is her brand thank you kimberly Patron Kimberly Cosse, is that how you pronounce it? Cosse? Cus or Cus. Kimberly, thank you. I appreciate that. Kimberly says, Why does she need a nice lady to clean her toilet if she's always peeing her pants? She needs to double down on a laundry lady. <laughs> True. I want to be relatable. Uh, and Nicole says, Thank you very much, Nicole. Nicole says, Two thumbs up, baby. Yeah. When life gives you lemons. Get it. Two thumbs up. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. Um, Boothing. Boothing appreciates it, too. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, it's just like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider it gaslighting. We're going to consider it gaslighting, I guess, at this point. Because what else could it be? I'm not relatable. I never want to be relatable. It's like, if you don't want to be relatable, you're not even relatable to yourself, you're saying in your content. Anyways, thank you again to Kimberly and Nicole. Okay, we're going to continue now. And this is hard, right? If you are a real estate agent and every other real estate agent in town who's a woman is like blowout, you know, gorgeous suit, nails done, hair, and that's not your vibe, you're going to feel like if you want to show up and you want to compete at that level that you have to be like them. And if you don't have a strong sense of who you are and confidence as a woman to be who you are, no matter what, that's a very big caveat. A lot of people are confident in who they are and are just like, this is who I am. If you don't want to buy real estate because I don't have makeup on, then fuck off. A lot of people are like that. She's not. So why am I listening to her advice? Okay. I really believe with everything in my heart that there is a way for us to show up as ourselves on social and your, the quality of your work and the value behind it will be so much greater because other people who are like you are going to find someone like them. There are lots of people, myself included, who would be really freaked out by a real estate agent who is like super glam. Like it's just because it's not my vibe. I wouldn't necessarily gravitate toward that. So that's just a random example, but I do think that it's possible. And I think I would have been a lot happier if I had understood back then that I could show up as myself. Now, would that mean that maybe not as many people want to buy my book because I didn't have a blowout that day? Sure. I don't know. I don't think so, but it's possible. But would I have been more aligned with the content and the work that I was doing and would it have been a stronger representation? Absolutely. And I think honestly, I wouldn't have gone through such intense tension with social media fans when I started to show more and more and more of myself, like my true self. And people were like, I don't know what you're doing. Like you've changed. I don't know why you're, I don't know what this is. I don't, and I was like, oh, I'm just trying to be myself. And what's crazy y'all is that I actually have to be really conscious of not falling into a bad habit. I know this is, I'm just going to be real. I try and always tell the truth and be real with you guys. Okay. I know. Ex Buckle up. She's going to tell us the truth now. <laughs> she always tries. 
She doesn't always succeed in telling us the truth, but she tries. So that's worth something, right? Okay, let's go. What is it going to be? Exactly the kind of stuff that I could post that would grow my Instagram. It did it for a really long time. I know exactly how to show up on the internet to make sure that everybody feels like, oh, she's, you know, she's right there in the middle. She's not pissing anyone off. She's not saying anything. <laughs> Do you? Because you said that you had a, a house cleaner that cleans your toilets twice a week and that you can climb the mountain faster, higher, better, wake up earlier than everyone else, and um, that you are basically Harriet Tubman reincarnated. Do you really know how to do social media, Rachel? Because <laughs> it doesn't seem like your track record is super great. I think she had a time where, and okay, just a side note on Girl Stop Apologizing, it was written with an MLM girl boss in mind because it brings up network marketing at least six or seven times in different parts. Like, Hey, if you want to join an upline, if you want to join a downline, if you want to, you know, grow your jewelry MLM business, like there's a lot of mentions of that. I think because of the success of the first book and who bought it, they tailored this book a lot to that audience. So yeah, when she was like the golden child of Arbon you know, the golden child of the beach body Huns back in that like golden era of when those things were still acceptable in society. Like, hey girl, like join my team, like wasn't as hated as it is today. Yes, she was like the starlet. She was the, the golden daughter of that industry. But then she denounced it sort of, said you're stupid if you buy a kit. So now she's banned from that. And it's like, no one forced you to go on a beach body stage. If you didn't agree with the, with the business model, that's on you for abandoning your morals and your ethics. That's not our fault. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. I swear that way. She's just sort of, right? Like the conservatives can find her okay. The liberals can maybe find her okay. She'll just sort of stay there in the middle and not say anything or do anything or be anything. I know how to do that. And I won't do it anymore. I won't. <laughs> She's never, the only thing she's ever spoken out about is like this week she said, uh, my son is gay, so therefore I guess I accept it. Or she said she accepts it and everyone should accept it. I, I shouldn't downplay what she said, but she's like, I have a gay son now. So, you know, now I'm going to come out and say I support LGBTQ community. What else has she ever talked about? Liberal or not? She doesn't, she said like she interviewed Joe Biden once. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're, you know, a hardcore Democrat. She's told people she's liberal before, but I've never heard her speak out about abortion. I've never heard her speak about vaccines or COVID other than that she was annoyed that she had to wear masks. I never heard her talk about anything, any issue. She didn't, she was silent basically the whole time about Black Lives Matter. Am I missing something? Where was she, where did she get controversial <laughs> on either side? She's sort of now talking about like denouncing religion. Okay. Anything else? I, I, I'm, I'm missing like the big controversy that she's like standing up for, a, a community that she's standing up for in any way. And she's getting flack for it, other than like two days ago, talking about her son is a, you know, a member of the community. Thank you, Laura. Laura says, can I get a, why do you follow me? Well, yes, you can, Laura. Your wish is my demand. Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? Dave's probably like, oh yeah, my time to return is coming. <laughs> they go back and forth, like who's in the controversy. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> and if it means that I have less followers, that's okay. Because the people who are here, I hope are here for me. Now, incidentally, my podcast numbers have never been bigger. And I think that's because the relationship that we have on podcasts is the realist that I am, right? It's the long form. It's me getting to talk to you. It's me really speaking truth and hopefully finding other people who speak the truth. But the podcast numbers are not bigger because the old fans are like, still here. A lot of you are. 
So isn't this the same problem though? You're just following like, okay, the podcast numbers are higher. So I'm just going to be this version because they like me as this. So I'm going to be more real, but who knows if real is really real. It's because she's following where the audience is. So once again, she's in the same cycle. Now she's just, instead of Instagram, she's on podcasts, which is actually more monetarily valuable to be more popular on your podcast because you sell ads on your podcast. On Instagram, you're not selling anything because she doesn't do many sponsorships. So actually you're in the same problem you're, you've been in before. But the podcast numbers have never been bigger because in being more myself, it meant that I lost followers, but that I started to gain a whole new crowd. I think you see this happen with musicians, right? With artists, with singers, songwriter, you know, big pop stars, whatever. They constantly reinvent themselves. And when they reinvent themselves, they have those fans who are like, I am ride or die. I'm here for the whole thing. I'll listen to everything you do and be down for every single evolution. And then you have people that are like, I want Destiny's Child Beyonce. I don't want the new Beyonce. And I'm like, man, you are freaking missing out. What I hope that we want from the people, the leaders, the teachers, the artists, the creatives on out in the world, what I I want at least is I want to see the growth. I want to see the evolution. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't she say on the Skinny Confidential podcast that she's like, people want to see the, you know, they want to see me um, performatively change and grow and learn. I'm not about that. I'm going to do it in the privacy of my own home. And I'm not going to be performative about my growth and learning from this experience. Okay, now she's saying that she does want to show and that she wants to see other people's evolution and growth. Pick a side, God. That's what I'm here for because that's human, right? And the only thing that proves who you really are is the consistency. She doesn't know who she is. That's just the, that's the bottom line. She doesn't know who the fuck she is and who really does. But I think she's just another one of us that doesn't know who she is right now. And she'll tell you she knows exactly who she is. And here's a book about everything that I've learned and I am, but still doesn't. Of the content and the evidence of your evolution. That's it. Mm -hmm. Because lots of people can say lots of things about you. Lots of people can say lots of things about me and they do. And if I let that keep me from doing my work, then they win then they're right. Because if when I posted something a year and a half ago, that was very upsetting. And everyone was like, you're a piece of crap. You are all these things. If that's the last thing I post, then they're right. If the last... (laughs) No one asked for that. Everyone just said, can you realize what you've done? Maybe how far off track you've gotten from your message or like what you should be doing as a a leader of women, as you claim. Uh, Apologize in a meaningful way where you're not deflecting to your team or deflecting your impact because your intention was good. So therefore, you know, I shouldn't be held accountable. Uh, maybe change, evolve the message past. Here's what I think today about X, Y. Here's my boyfriend's, uh, you know, here's me and my boyfriend talking about our sex life. Here's my boyfriend's, you know, we, our dating story, our kissing story. Like we were expecting, I think a little bit more than that, but we didn't get it. Thing I post was something that I did not on purpose. We get it. But that had a really detrimental effect on myself, on my community, on my career, on my team at work, all of it. If I stick my head in the sand and that's it, then that is my truth. No one asked for that. No one's asking you to stick your head in the sand. Quite the opposite, actually. Thank you, Mandy Lee. Mandy Lee says, I love all your lives, but this one is even better than usual. So much tea. This tea is piping.
piping hot. I think because she deleted it, that it gives it that extra little, mm, ah, mm, spicy, <laughs> delicious. So I agree. And Kitty Mervine, hello, Kitty Mervine, uh, has dov- lovey dovey eyes blowing hearts in the air. Well, that's nice, Kitty. Thank you so much. Okay, for Mandy and Kitty, we're gonna play this again. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Oh, I love that sound. I love the sound of Mindy and Kitty. And Angela. (laughs) Angela can join too. Angela says, keep doing the good work of exposing the hypocrisy of these gurus. Love your streams. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. You know, I have been feeling lately like, is this too much? Am I being too harsh? And then like something like this comes out. I'm like, no, this is exactly why, because the lesson hasn't been learned yet. And I need to move on from Rachel. I've said this a million times. I'm, I'm trying to move on and, and cover other people. We cover other people on cringe fluencers, but on my channel, I can talk about Rachel the most because it's the easiest. I have the most Intel about her. And like, I've read the books and I've got the podcast and it's part of my routine to listen to what she says because there's so many inconsistencies but I know that I need to move on at some point move at least expand out in addition to the Rachel content so as long as she's whenever she decides to stop giving me stuff to talk about I'll give her a break (laughs) because we're best friends we're best friends right now thank you Angela I appreciate that okay back to Rach talking about Whatever she's talking about. Because I never said anything again. What I have tried to... Oh, uh, again, I, I don't think anyone was, including myself, was like, the solution here is to never post again. Rachel, I would only be happy if you never posted a post or any of your thoughts ever again. That's the only solution. No, the opposite was to, hey, learn from this, change, grow, and, and acknowledge the past acknowledge it. That's the only thing I've really wanted. Talk about, show the, show and give more details about the TikTok one time and say, look, this is what I said. What I meant here was this. It came off like this wrong. Here's what I wrote here. I don't think I'm Oprah. And I get, I totally see how it comes across as that. And actually when I met Oprah, it wasn't a good experience anyways, because, you know, I talked about my tampon and she didn't like it. And I'm kind of embarrassed by that, but you know, maybe I'll get another chance one day, just a little bit of like actual authenticity. And I think we would all feel a lot better, but here we are not feeling better. (laughs) Do. And what I hope you have seen is my continuing to do the work, my continuing to search my heart, my continuing to unpack and learn more and do better and show up in different ways, to have more empathy, to learn and to grow. And that's all we can do. And this is why you have to know yourself and you have to know your values before you put content out in the world. Because I personally believe that human beings have the ability to become better. And I believe that we're all doing our very best with what we've got at the moment that we're having this experience. And I don't think anybody should be judged on one bad experience. That's a core value that I believe in. And if I believe in that, then I have to also believe that for myself. And there are days it's hard. I just to be totally truthful with you guys, I've talked about this quite a lot. I've talked about this here on the show and on other people's shows, but um, that time period after that post was was the darkest I've ever been in my whole life. It is the darkest experience. She said, wait, after she posted it, the cancellation part, because she said 2019 was like the worst part of her life when she was like at the height of her career. She said before, oh, this is like the traveling was too much and the makeup and the, you know, I listened to the guru who told me to not take my foot off the gas and I listened to him and that was the worst thing I ever did. And Dave wanted me to be on all these stages and I didn't want to be. I just wanted to be home with my bra off with my children and he was forcing me to do this because he has a scarcity mindset, but that's okay. Like that's all the shit she said that happened in 2019. So let me go back just a tiny bit 
because I didn't hear that correctly. Okay. And the fact that you got, people had backlash against you. Yes, I'm sure it is hard. And I wouldn't want to experience it myself too, but that's kind of like the consequence you pay for having a bad take and you move on from it or you don't. And yet we're still here a year and a half later, a year and two months later, discussing like why she can't even really even talk about it yet. And on other people's shows, but um, that time period after that post was is the darkest I've ever been in my whole life. It is the darkest experience of my life. Which is insane because like she's to- she's talked in great detail about her brother's suicide, like and other tragic incidences in her life that she's gone through. The fact that you people didn't like you for a short period of time and gave you advice of how to change and move forward. That was the darkest period. Like it doesn't, she can have her, I mean, obviously she's allowed to feel however she wants to feel. If she wants to put things on a list and like rank them in different orders, like that's not my business, but like, just seems odd that that's the thing that has been the worst. It's like people were trying to help. Maybe they were too negative. Maybe they decided not to buy your products anymore. But I think Overall, people were trying to guide you in the right direction so that you did have a future potential to help women continuously. Not trying to hurt you and kill you. Like, I don't know why she's got that mindset. It's just like, because she was not 1000% worshipped at that moment, then it became like devastating. And that's unhealthy. That's something that she should fix now. Because... I really took the things that people were saying and as my truth. It took me a very long time to understand that there's a difference between making a mistake because of a place of privilege and learning from that and growing from that, becoming, I hope, a better person. There's a big difference between that and someone who actually says something with the intent to cause harm. And I experienced that situation with so much shame, with so much shame. And it took a really long- I think sometimes having some shame is not the worst thing in the world. You shouldn't shame yourself to the point where you can't function. But being ashamed of something that you've done that you now see was wrong is okay in my opinion. There's lots of things and people I've treated horribly in my opinion now or things I've said to people or, you know, even like in high school or like middle school, like, you know, participating in bullying types of activities that I have done. I'm like, I regret that 100%. And I am ashamed of it, but I can't go back and change it. I can only move forward and try to do better in the future, but I'm still, it's not like I'm not ashamed of my behavior in the past or how I've treated an ex-boyfriend or something like that, you know, or a friend that I don't talk to anymore or whatever. Like the time in between, I've reflected and go, yeah, that was not okay of me to say what I said or to do what I did. That was not okay. I'm ashamed. Is that so bad? I'm still living my life. I'm still functioning as a person and thinking I'm still deserving of being on this earth and having things in my life. I think both of those can live. The, uh, what does she call it? Cognitive cognitive dissonance that she was talking about earlier. I think that's what she's experiencing right now, that she can't have shame and also move forward and and fix it. Time to understand that my shame. Thank you, Lucinda. Lucinda, Lucinda Bahina. Is that right? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, where's Dave right now? Let's ask Heidi. Hi, Heidi, Lucinda wants to know where Dave is. He's always in the bathroom. Oh, okay. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you, Lucinda. <laughs> Let's continue. Doesn't help anyone, and it certainly doesn't help me. So, yeah. It does help you. I think I am one of the worst examples of how badly you can get it wrong even when you're not trying to so I don't know if you want to be a human being and you want to show up in this space I don't think anyone sets out to get it wrong and that's the difference like well this person set out to get it wrong and they did I set out to get it right and I got it wrong so I deserve less criticism (laughs) I think everyone goes out to get it right everyone sets out to get it right And it's not received that way by some people. 
and you want to do it authentically, which I hope that you do because we don't need any more fake stuff on the internet. We got plenty of that. We need you showing up as you. If you want to do that, then I think it's okay if you get it wrong as long as you're learning from the mistake. But knowing who you are and how you want to show up and what you value. Thank you, Lucinda. Again, dang, coming in hot with those those super chats two in a row. Welcome. Uh, Lucinda says, Lucinda says, I don't think you're too harsh. You are holding people accountable for their pr- privileged ways. From a Latina of immigrant parents, I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you back. Thank you. I do. I, I really do appreciate that. And I'm glad that I'm glad that it's not all f- just it's not being taken as just like, oh, I'm just shitting on her because I hate her. I don't hate her. And I still am going to leave room for her to recover and, and, you know, get herself back on track to becoming a guru or whatever she wants to do. And if that's what she chooses to do, then hopefully there's a a happy medium where she can do it and not be offensive and give out this advice. But uh, we'll see. Uh, It remains to be seen. So in the meantime... (laughs) In the meantime, uh, I just want to say... Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? book. We just need a little break, a little, like, humor break (laughs) sometimes. Oh, God. Okay, I know this is, like, horrible that this is... This is a long podcast. I feel like she's wrapping up, but we got quite a bit longer left to go. and making sure that anything you post is aligned with those values is really powerful and really important. It's really powerful because we need to be able to stand up for what we believe in. We've learned, we've been taught, we've been groomed by our parents, by our partners, by society, that if someone corrects us or if someone doesn't like us, then we're wrong, then we should shut up, then we should apologize. And sometimes we're meant to learn and grow. And sometimes, a lot of times, you're meant to stand up for what you believe in. But if you don't know what you believe in before you post... What? So she doesn't think she needs to apologize because she believes in what she said? Is that what I'm hearing? Or am I misunderstanding? Then you're always going to have anxiety because anyone can challenge you and you'll crumble. The other thing I really wanted to talk about here was making sure that you know when not to post. You know, I talked about not posting anything in real time and really being conscious of how you do and what you do and how you share the content that you put out. But nobody, I've never heard anybody talk about when not to post on social media. And I thought of three times that you should not post on social media for it like for work or maybe for life whatever but for work stuff this just feels um if the thing that you want to post or create is from a place of fear or from a place of anger from a place of fear or from a place of anger just shouldn't go out just shouldn't And maybe you're thinking like, wait, I feel really passionately about this subject and, um, you know, I really wanted, I was fired up in the thing and I really wanted to post it and I'm really passionate. I feel like it should be out in the world. Great. Even something that's passionate and fired up and challenging can still be grounded in a place of love, right? So let's say you feel very passionately this is like her advice about like how to maybe avoid getting canceled (laughs) and not everyone's obsessed with that. Some people are able and willing to, and I think I fall into this camp sometimes, sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. And mostly I do. I feel like, um, where it's like, I know that this is a angry take and I'm willing to let people see me angry because I do care so much about this. And I know that it's not, well-behaved girl behavior as she would probably frame it as or you know others might say professional behavior where I'm like very like I'm corporate and I'm going to just be neutral uh but posting it knowing that I'm not gonna not post when I'm angry if my point is to get across that I'm angry (laughs) 
Not everything is about to be, oh, do they perceive me as positive? That's where I'm off track a little bit here at this. Like, this advice is good if you never want to, like, upset anyone ever, which is basically a, a, a fruitless endeavor. So why even bother? Just post what you believe in and stick by it. And if you change your mind, then apologize and move on. Anyways, my, thank you so much. Okay, my, my says, this goes towards easing your frustration caused by Rach's podcast. Maybe a boat? Maybe. I will slowly buy you a boat. Thanks, Dave. Dave, what are you talking about? Dave, you're talking about peace, aren't you? No, I'm talking about buying my book. Oh, Dave. The days of covering Dave were so long ago. One of my favorite Daves. My favorite days of Dave. I just did a post uh, today you, actually Mike. about raising a child who's LGBTQ plus. And I feel very passionately about that subject. It is a value that I have. It is something I am willing to go to battle over and is something that can really easily fire me up, right? I can get emotional about it. I can, I, I, it's very close to the surface for me. But even in creating that content, that content is grounded in love for my son, not anger at the bigots. That's the difference. So if you can create from a place of love, I believe that love is what that post will find. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I don't know why the bigots need to get coddled in this situation. Like, oh, it's not about them. It's like, well, it kind of is because they're trying to take away their rights. So maybe they should be told off a little bit. I don't know. I don't really know what she means by this. Like, oh, it's in love. So it's okay to say. It's like, why aren't we allowed to be pissed off? Why? And maybe it's a woman thing or maybe it's just a person thing. But like, why can't we express our emotions? And the same thing with like the toilet gate stuff. She was pissed. She was angry about someone accusing her of being privileged. Okay. She handled it wrong. The way she spoke about her cleaning lady was not okay. The way she compared herself to those, you know, women in history, a lot of them being minority groups was not okay. However, her being angry that someone called her out, I think is a, 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 a fine emotion to have. It's the way that she, she handled it was wrong. So maybe keep the anger about being accused, you know, of something that you think you don't do, but get rid of all the other stuff, the put downs. I think she's missing the point. She's like, just never be angry. If you post something out of anger, change it to love. It's like, that doesn't really do anything. I think it's like, find a way to express yourself in a healthy way where you're not offensive to people. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> yes, there right. are people on the internet who are crazy, but we'll just let them do what they do. But if I can stay grounded in love instead of fear, instead of anger, instead of, you know, defensiveness, that's what is going to have the best effect on the intention that I have. And I can tell you that I was, going back to that the post that you know, burned down the internet for me. That post. <clears throat> Yogi Ness, welcome, welcome. Uh, this was from yesterday. This podcast was from yesterday and it has been taken down yesterday. So hot piping tea from yesterday. Was 100%. I thought I was saying something inspiring. I was talking about this idea of being not like other people and I you know, aspired to live a life that was different than other people. Um, and it, the intention was to inspire other people like me and I did it in the wrong way. And I did it in a way that was tone deaf and I didn't think about how it would be received obviously, but here's why I mention it again. I was so angry that day. I was so angry. We know. I was so, so angry about a lot of things. But because even if I wasn't angry in the video, because I was angry, I really believe in my heart that that's why it was met with anger. I think that human beings can pick up on that all day. 
And so it's not to say that we don't have times in our lives where we experience negative emotions, but that is not the place to create content from. So that's my personal opinion. The second time I... Okay, so she... So, okay, that... My first video I ever did about Rachel Hollis, I... um, I made a joke. I was like, the way she says this makes it seem like she believes this is really inspirational. Like this is going to be on the cover of her next journal. And I made a joke about that. And I actually photoshopped like some notebooks that said like, if I, my life is unrelatable, I'm doing it wrong. Or if my life is relatable, I'm doing it wrong. As if that was going to be her new line of planners, you know? And I got that vibe from her at that time that she did think she really did something there. Like she was being inspirational in that moment. Like she was inspiring these people to be better than others. But that's the whole problem. I want to be different than other people. Who are these other people? Those are your fans. Those are your followers. Those are fellow women and men who are just trying to figure life out alongside you, Rachel. And the fact that you're like those other people, more people like me, more people like me equates to me. That's who that message is for. It's for her to watch back and go, yes, I am better than everyone, everyone here on this earth. That's the message. And that's why it's getting received the way it does. The fact that she just said, like, I was angry about other shit and people picked up on that. But the message was great. The message was great. I was just angry about Dave and our divorce proceedings or whatever, you know, something unrelated. That's what the universe picked up on. Give me a break. Now she's back. Any any progress that I felt like, okay, she made there in this podcast was just deleted. (laughs) Because now she's doubling down that, like, no, it was inspirational. It was intended to inspire women who are also, you know, uh, selfish and narcissistic like me. The fact that people took it negatively is because I was just angry and they're picking up on that. You do not post is when you're stressed. When you're stressed, if you're a woman, if you're a bleeder and you have hormones... I mean, if your hormones are out of whack, don't even go on social media, actually. I'm not even kidding. Don't even go. Just don't even go. If you have a period, you're not allowed to express yourself on social media. Just ban yourself. Uh, Just ban yourself from social media. We don't have enough bans on women in this country, so just ban yourself, okay, from social media. No one wants to hear your PMS rants. (laughs) Right, girls? (laughs) Leave it to the men for that time of the month to express themselves as openly as they would like. You're going to see stuff that's going to make you compare yourself. You're going to see stuff that makes you feel worse. You're going to see stuff that's going to make you feel some kind of way. Or you're going to see stuff that makes you think you should post. And then you post. This is the third time that I think you should never post is when you think you have to or when you think you need to. This is something that entrepreneurs who use social media as a marketing tool fall into all the time. We post because we think we have to. No, you should only be posting because you have content that you think will be helpful to your community, period, 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 period. You should only post if you have content that you think will be helpful to your community. That's it. But she apparently just said two seconds ago, she thought that it would be helpful to her community. The women like her that want to be better than everyone else. When we post when we need to is when mistakes are made. I had two years, like when I was telling you guys about like the brand and when I felt like sort of other people had control of my brand, I had like two years where people on our team did my social media. And... That is so wildly dangerous because from the public's perspective, you are speak that like what they see is your voice. And I had this horrible situation where something was posted on my account that was a quote from Maya Angelou. And the person on our team, bless her, just didn't check it or didn't, I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak for her or why it happened. But publicly, that looks like I did it. And also publicly, that's my responsibility because this person is on my team. So I'm taking full responsibility, but every single thing that happens. Great point, Bay. Great point. 
Exactly. Oh, it's so cute. I'm a hippie. So therefore, it's like, th- yeah, wh- how is this helping anybody? Seeing your kids clothed is not helpful. Seeing them naked is 100% not any more helpful. It's worse. <laughs> Less helpful. <sighs> Okay, now she's st- throwing her team member again under the bus for the Maya Angelou thing. And again, it's like, yeah, I can understand that's uh, frustrating. This is frustrating to have a team that posts on your social media and they make a mistake. But the way she handled it publicly, threw her under the bus, the second that it you know, got heat and, and problems was kind of a turn off. And the second thing now she uh, continues. It's like, hey, I think there needs to be an, hey, I you know, didn't make a policy that's clear or have a, an approval process, um, like someone I trusted to make sure that they post at certain times, whatever. At the end of the day, it's your company. She was CEO at the time. I don't, don't care who posted it. It's up to you to figure this out. It's your company. To, to, to blame a low-level, most likely employee for your mistakes, that's your personal brand, that's on your personal thing, it doesn't make you look good. Take some responsibility. Since then, in press, in social, they reference. And also, she stole the quote from Maya Angelou. That's not true. But again, we are not in control. Of- that was not the only time that she had misattributed quotes, too. That was, this was a pattern. If it was a one-time incident, I think people would be like, okay, it's a team member they made a mistake. It's been handled. Rachel took responsibility because it's her company. It's all good. But that was one instance, one big blaring instance of a larger problem. And also the way that Rachel handled it, people were turned off by that. They were like, wow, she's really like not taking any responsibility for this. The way things are received. But again, we are not in control of what is received. We are in control of what goes out. And so I do want to just give you that to consider that if you believe that you need to post, and I'm talking about you. But also. It wasn't my fault. But also. It was definitely not my fault. But also. It was never me. (laughs) That's all I hear. Nothing's my fault. It was never me. Don't, you know, I was angry at something else, but I still stand by it, but I don't, but I do, but I don't. It's like, oh my God, this is bad. I get, yeah, again, I get why she deleted it. Personally, not your business, right? If you own a coffee shop, yeah, you need some posts. You need to create community. You can get on Planoly, right? Uh, This is not an ad, but that's what we have used for a really long time. You can get on Planoly. You can have someone program it. You can pre-approve it in advance. You know everything that's going out. And then you can have consistent content rolling out. But if you are a personal individual, right? And you are, your social media is in your name. You're trying to put goodness out into the world. You're trying to lead people, however that looks like for you. Yeah, I'm trying to put goodness out in the world, lead people. Like, that's, again, you only. There's not that many people that do this as a career. You can do the same thing. You can create that content in advance. You can put it on a scheduler in advance. You just, you cannot have social content going out into the world that at the very least you are not seeing before it goes. Because it is your responsibility if your name is attached to it. And no shit. <laughs> you don't want to hold on. You don't want to have that, have something go wrong and have it be the result of you trying to move so fast that you didn't sort of catch it in time. So those are my three when not to post. When you're f- afraid or angry, when you're stressed out or hormonal, <sighs> and because you feel like you have to. When you haven't gotten your mommy wine and chocolate for the day, your delivery from the state, the you know the ward of the state is going to send you the the women chocolate month of the club. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just yeah, it does seem sexist, right? Don't post when you're hormonal. Like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> we have hormones every day of all of our lives. Like, what does that mean? It's just like. Don't post when you're fighting with your boyfriend over him putting the toilet seat down. It's like, can we stop with the stereotypes, please?
the last thing I wanted to talk about with this subject is that there was something that I heard in Lauren's voice memo that I feel like is a, a greater root cause here. So she said that she's a real estate agent and she's like, you know, my parents were, she said, my parents were missionaries. And so I was always raised to be the good girl and to represent the nonprofit. And so I think part of the reason that she feels weird about social media is because that social media is talking about a business, right? Okay. So I think one of the reasons that she feels anxiety about posting on social is because essentially she's talking about a business and you know that if she's talking about that business that she's going to make money off of the thing that she's talking about this is such a common thread for so many female entrepreneurs that we are terrified to talk about our work we're terrified to charge money for what we do we're terrified to to tell people about a product that we just spent three years getting to market and then we don't want to admit that we even have a product because who are we to ask for money in return for this thing that we've created and we have a lot of weird limiting beliefs about that and I get it one thing that will really help you is just practice makes perfect on this one like you are going to have to find the courage to talk about your business and just do it it's sort of like jumping into cold water you just got to do it right Another thing that's really going to help you here is surround yourself with other entrepreneurs. This can be women or men who are not afraid to talk about their business to other people. When we hang out with people who are insecure, we absorb insecurity. When we hang out with people who are confident, we absorb confidence. So what you need to see right now is the ways that different... Your friends are struggling. Ditch their ass. We don't want to struggle with them. Ew. Find people who are more confident. God. So obvious. People are talking about houses that are for sale or businesses that are for sale or whatever your industry is in a way that feels good to you. There are lots of podcast hosts, like there's lots of bros, right? And dudes who are just like, oh, go, go, go work a hundred hours a week, blah, blah, blah. That's not my jam. That's not my style. That's not how I do what I do. And I could very easily hang out with those people and then start to absorb that a bit and think that, if I want to have six- her, one of her closest friends allegedly is Tom Billyu, who claims to work 120 hours a week. <laughs> I hate him now. <laughs> okay. Success, and I have to show up like those people. But that's when we go back to who are we on the inside? Nobody gets to tell us who we are. You know who you are. So how do you want to talk about? being a real estate agent in your town. Maybe you are the queen of here's everything to do in our community. This is the best, you know, organic grocery store. This is my favorite coffee shop. This is the part of town that I love. This is where I would live if I was starting a family. This is where I would live if I was like a young single, you know, career-minded gal. Like maybe how you want to talk about real estate is that you are the one who knows everything about your community. And so when you're slipping in, oh, and here's a house in the side of town, I was telling you guys is perfect for families. And this is perfect for families. It's three bedroom, two bath, beautiful backyard, close to good schools, right? And it's not weird because you have been organically talking about your community and showing off and representing other businesses. And you're doing what you're doing, but in a really organic way, in a way that feels really good. If you're having anxiety with social, maybe it's because you're posting in a way that doesn't feel like you. You know there's a disconnect, right? Maybe you know there's a disconnect between what you're posting and who you are. And so you're feeling weird. But if what you're feeling weird about is that you have a job and that you're talking about your job, let that go. Let that go. Because even your parents who are missionaries would tell you that the mission requires money. 
Okay. And whatever your mission is, whether it's you taking care of your kids or maybe you don't have kids, maybe you are trying to buy a house for yourself, whatever your mission in life is, whether it's to take care of you, your parents, your community, other people, whatever it is that we are trying to do requires money. That is not a bad thing. That, you know, everyone loves to like flip that scripture and say like, money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money, the worship of money, that is the root of all evil. Girl, you worship money more than anyone I know. <laughs> she doesn't like, she, she, her birthday wish when she was like 12 was to be a rich woman. Okay. That's worship of money. She wanted a Louis Vuitton bag to represent the type of woman she was becoming. Okay, that's money. A Louis Vuitton bag is no better than another bag. It's just the representation of, oh, I've reached this amount of money that is now in my bank account. Oh, I want a house in, in Hawaii. Yeah, okay, I'm sure that has nothing to do with that's a status symbol of, of wealth, being able to do that. Living in a, a big house in a mansion and talking about all the money that you make and saying that I made them in her podcast, this, this podcast that we're listening to from two years ago saying like, I made a multi-million dollar co uh, uh, company from Google. That's all money worship. That's what she does. This is all it's about. How to make a multi-million dollar business. It's not how to make a business that's fun, that's helpful only, because she would have stopped when she didn't find it fun anymore. She would have stopped before when she's, you know, she wouldn't have wanted a person that's not her to to decide who she, her persona is. The reason she did that, if, if it's even true at all, is that she could make more money faster. That's what it's about. Yes, you need money. I struggle with that a lot. I struggle with this concept of, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's like I, I, I never had money, so I feel weird having it, number one. Number two, it's like I'm able to live in this house and, and not struggle right now. So it's like I feel like that's enough and I shouldn't want more and that there's something wrong with wanting more because I just knew how it felt to not have any. So it's like if I don't, I don't, you know, I could not take another client and that client's going to have to go somewhere else. And maybe that person needs their money more than I do. Maybe that's wrong to think, but I do struggle with that. But this advice ain't going to help me with that problem. This advice is coming from a hypocrite. Money is a form of currency. It's a form of exchange. It's something that you can use to buy food, to pay rent, to get gas for your car, to take care of grandma, to donate to your favorite charity, to give money to your church community. Like, Money is not a bad thing. And having a job is not a bad thing. You are helping people find their homes. That's not a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing. But interestingly enough, whatever energy we are creating our content with and whatever energy we are putting into the content, like if you are creating that and are like, oh my gosh, this is so wrong. This is so bad. Please don't get mad at me because I'm talking about a house that's for sale. If that's the energy that's behind the scenes, somehow I promise you that is the vibration that that post is going out into the world with. You got to know who you- Things don't have vibrations. Posting a post is not going to have a physical vibration Okay, it might have a vibe. Like, yeah, the vibe of that was kind of angry or the vibe of that was kind of, that's not what she's talking about. She's saying it in The Secret, The Secret by Rhonda Burnway. Like, this vibration of 2.5 hertz is a very low vibe. You need a high vibe um, real estate post. That's what she's referencing, I think. She doesn't mean it symbolically. She means it in the, in the spirituality sense of like, I'm better because I'm a higher vibrating person than you. I vibrate on a higher frequency and it annoys the shit out of me that people say that because it's like, what does that mean? Measure it. Show me how I measure it. Mai says, thank you again, Mai. I really, really appreciate your, your contribution to the show today. Thank you. Mai says, why doesn't she hire someone to help her structure her podcast? Nothing makes sense. Your commentary is needed for me to understand what's going on. I, I don't even know if I'm right half the time because I'm trying to follow her like web of insanity too. So 
I might miss the mark most times because I don't think she, there's a structure. And I do believe she should have a structure. She's at the end of the podcast it says this produ- podcast is produced by me, Rachel Hollis. So she is the one structuring it. I think honestly, it's because she doesn't have anyone to be able to uh, pay <laughs> to do it for her. Because I think maybe as much as they're spending money and the Hollis family on personal items, I don't know how much the business is making anymore. They might have investments that are paying off and have them and have savings, but I would beg to guess that they're not rolling in the cash as of late. So I think they need to conserve like just why, why Dave, you know, created a book tour with him and Heidi in parking lots and didn't hire a team to do it. I think the same might be true for a podcast. They're cutting corners where they can and trying to recover the funds. And I actually, I need to look this up, um, that someone sent me their, um, their login for uh, Inner Circle with Rachel. And apparently, I haven't watched it yet, but apparently she makes some claims about the status of the Hollis company and the financials being very bad, which is not shocking, but sort of shocking that she would tell people that in a public forum that's been recorded. So I'm going to have to look into that and report back. Um, they sent me their credentials so I can log in. But um, I really have to pee really, really bad. Can we all take a two-minute break? I'll play some music. <laughs> Give me two minutes. Uh, Get a life. Oh, that's Dave. <laughs> Hold on. But also... Man, do I not? That's the only song I have? Okay, I'm just going to mute and be right back. Nobody leave. I have returned. Thank you for sticking with me. Okay, let's continue. You are. And you got to make sure that whatever you're putting out is aligned. And if those two things are true, then you have to let go of the rest. It's so funny. It's not funny. This is how the universe works. But it's so funny that this topic came up today because I had gone on Instagram to post uh, to promote today's podcast episode. And it just so happened that what I opened up was a first thing I saw was um, Andy Grammer and it was me interviewing Andy Grammer and it was on his feed. So I follow him and it was the first thing and I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, He's become a buddy. And so I went to go put like heart emojis, like I'll comment and put heart emojis. And if you know me now, you know, I never read comments. So I only even knew that the internet was very upset about the picture of Noah because my dad called me because he was like, oh, this is, you know, so I don't read comments. And that's a decision that I made because I'm kind of surprised to hear. I'm I'm sort of, I don't know, pleasantly surprised or just negatively. I don't know. It's a surprise that she has any relationship with her parents. She said that her mom went to visit her in Hawaii recently and her dad's calling her now. She she's talked about her parents like that they've never spoken to her about what happened to her brother and that they disrespected her, that they were poor, that they were pathetic in a lot of ways. Like, not that she didn't say the word pathetic, but she basically describes him as pathetic. Like, 
you know, excuses for parents, like a dad who didn't care and a mother who didn't have financial means to be independent. So who, you know, what does it matter? They bought me stuff from Costco. How dare them? They, they bought me a Sears coat. How icky. Like, I'm just shocked that they have any sort of relationship at all because she so publicly shames them. <laughs> but okay. I want to be able to put the content out in the world and I don't want the good feedback any more than I want the negative feedback. I don't want the good feedback because it will train me to chase success. Ooh, they liked this. Okay. I'm going to do more of this thing so that I can get their love more. Like I'm telling you, there's this psychological stuff goes deep and I, I'm really mindful of it. So I don't consume comments either way. What? What? <laughs> Again, what are you talking about? Didn't you just spend an hour talking about all the comments that are so rude and how dare they say these things? And I can't believe they said this and this and this and that. And I couldn't believe they said that. And then I read this and then the DMs are horrible. If you think the comments are bad, you should read the DMs. I never read the, okay, now we're back to, we never read the comments. What? Which is it, girl? Girl, pick a truth. This is the same, like, did you realize this is the same podcast? You haven't hit stop record yet and record a new one? This is the same train of thought. You've changed your story now again. It makes it very hard to follow. Like, what, okay, so if you don't read comments, then what's the point? Everyone should just be able to shit talk you all day because you're not going to read them anyways. Okay, whatever. But because I commented on his thing with the hearts, I just happened to see the first two comments under what I was writing. And the first one said, this is so disappointing. And the second one said, I can't believe you would do this. Rachel Hollis is so problematic. And it like took my breath away. Cause I was like, wow, I inter I'm just, I'm interviewing this guy about COVID and his tour. And we had a really beautiful conversation and we talked about family and life and addiction and overcoming hard things and the loss of his mother. And it just was such a beautiful conversation. And I just thought that, 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 that was what was received. Like in that clip, he was talking about something pretty hard and the people weren't even listening to what he was saying. They were just trying to poke him or shame him for associating with me. And my normal reaction to this in the past would be I'd go down a shame spiral and I wouldn't go on social media for like two weeks and I'd feel so embarrassed and I would one million percent let two comments from strangers tell me who I am. And the two comments from strangers would keep me from creating content to the three million people who listen to this podcast every month. I'm not kidding. In the past, 100%, I would shrivel into a small ball and I would only function to like do the necessary stuff and I would take care of my kids. But I would let the comments of two strangers decide who I am. And thank God I saw that today. And I just very quickly, because I've been practicing really hard, I was able to take a step back and look at that. And I was like, I am not problematic. I'm not. Problematic implies mm. that I am living my life or doing my work in a way that is causing issue, that is... It does. I don't know, being doing things wrong. And as a human being and as a creator in this world, I have absolutely done things in the past and gotten it wrong years ago. And I've learned and I've grown. And I again, to Toilet Gate was a year and two months ago. That's not years. That's a year plus two months. <laughs> and maybe in two years, we can say years ago, this happened, but we're not there yet. So I get what she's trying to do, put space between that incident, as she calls it, and today, <clears throat> but there just hasn't been that much time. So the fact that she keeps trying to say that is not true, or it's, yeah, it's not true, number one, but it's like also overcompensation. It's like, okay, 
what have what's really changed since that you just stood by it five minutes ago and said I, well I was talking to the people who are like me so you know I was the only problem was I was angry and I shouldn't have I shouldn't have given off the vibration of anger so again another contradiction another I don't know I just yeah I don't even know what the point of this is and it, yeah if some people are coming in are like this is a response to a question yes yeah, so the question was Hey, I have anxiety about post, post. I think I would it would create so much more anxiety hearing this as an answer of like I didn't even think about that. I just didn't know if like noon or like two p.m. was a better time to post, and it gives me anxiety. Sorry, I didn't know. No, this was all gonna come out of your mouth, Rachel. Um, yeah, this is a this is a answering a question. But uh, yeah, I don't even think that's real. I think probably someone on her two person team <laughs> called in and said, "Hey, uh, hear, hear me lob this up for you and." Rachel can softball it out. Um, I, you know, I feel badly, I guess. Like, I don't want... It doesn't feel good to read a negative comment about you, you know. But to say she's not problematic, you are problematic. I'm sorry. Even when she wasn't canceled, she was still problematic. The things that she said in her books, the, you know, obsession with, you know, the, the not even obsession, I shouldn't say, but, you know, if you can't stick to a diet, no one should trust you because you're not trustworthy was problematic before she was canceled. And there's people that would will and still do stand by her and say, no, I like that teaching. I need that in my life. You know, her telling someone at a, I think it was a beach body conference, you know, if your sister doesn't support you in this MLM, you, there's, you should not talk to her anymore. That was problematic before she was canceled. So it's not just this incident. It's not like her body of work is 100% perfect and that this one thing threw it all into a disarray. It was already par problematic and the cancellation brought that to the forefront, which happens a lot. Like if you go and watch like a thing about Harvey Weinstein and you go, the one thing that opened the can of worms wasn't the only thing that happened. It opens it up and then people start to look at it and go, oh my God, did you hear about this? Did you look at this? Did you see this thing that he did? And then it becomes like, it all comes out. They say like, it all comes out in the wash. Thank you, Ur Willow. It all comes out in the wash. So it's like, that's why all the other stuff, like all of her teachings, all of her, you know, messaging that was popular got thrown into question. So she never really had a time that I know of where she wasn't problematic. I don't know what she means, what her definition of the word is, but to me, it's like, yeah, that it wasn't always good advice. Regard Anyways, okay. I like to believe that anybody who consumes my content today can see that and also is okay with the humanity of one bad day inside of a 15-year career. One bad day inside of a 15-year career. Inside of mm -hmm. 10 books, inside of ten almost books. 350 episodes of a podcast. 10 books? Three, six, two cookbooks? That's seven. That's eight. We're getting two new books? God. I'm tired. I can't read any more Hollis books anymore. <laughs> we got Girl Wash Your Face, Girl Stop Apologizing. Didn't see that coming. She had a cookbook. She might have two cookbooks, maybe five. And then the three fiction books. That's eight. Where's 10 books coming from? That means two books are coming. That means Girl What the Health is probably coming and a new book that she's talked about recently writing. Girl... I don't get it. Why are you doing this to yourself? You don't like anything about your job anymore. No one likes it either. It's showing in your ticket sales and your YouTube video views. I don't know about the podcast. I guess the podcast is doing well, allegedly, but we can't see the analytics, so she could be lying about that. It's like, you're not even enjoying it. Stop. <laughs> Inside of thousands of social media posts, one bad day has made these people decide that I am wrong and bad and forever and shouldn't be allowed to interview people anymore. 
And here's what's beautiful. The two things about that too, it's like, no, that's not accurate. It wasn't one bad day because if it was one bad day, there wouldn't be this much content to talk about and to discuss and to dissect. And like the, you know, her on stage saying, I own you, I can sell you my dirty socks was, that's part of the equation too. So if you look at somebody and go, you know, man, they had that one bad day. And then you kind of look at, you look at like, okay, so how did they get here? And you research it and you find out, no, it just was a bad day. Okay. People have, have recovered from cancellations before comedians have done it. Um, I don't know. A lot of people have done it. Like the, uh, the, the majority of people who get canceled come back at some point and are received well, or have to kind of like put their tail between their legs for a while, apologize. And then they're kind of allowed back in. The fact that she's never really had, you know, she doesn't, she said even this one, like, I don't really have shame about it. I thought I was doing it for the right reasons. So therefore, like, I'm cool with what I said. You know, it was off color or if it was taken badly, but it was taken because, you know, of this, this, and this. So she's really not upset about it. She has no regrets. I don't regret anything. Um, And uh, I don't know. Again, like... Those people saying that on the comments, she's problematic, doesn't come from that one day. And if that's what she really believes, then she's naive. (laughs) Or she doesn't see the whole picture of what people are talking about. Like, it's not the one day. It's, It's you saying you had an exceptional marriage with your husband, selling tickets to teach people how you did it, and then getting divorced. That was a big thing, too. That's not out of the equation when it comes to is this person problematic let's compute it it's the toilet gate was how people felt deep down that she always was but couldn't prove it and then that was the proof that people needed like I knew she was something was off with her I read that book and there was just a like a a seething anger beneath the surface that she hates people because she didn't get to have the Louis Vuitton bag when she was 15 She had to wait till she was 29 to get that bag. So she missed out on those years and she's fucking pissed about it. (laughs) You know, she only had 100,000 followers. Uh, She wanted a million. She's pissed about that. She deserves 20 million followers according to her mindset. That's why she's mad. (sighs) About this life, they are absolutely allowed to their opinion. 100%. But because I know myself and I know my heart, I don't have to let that opinion shape me or my work. Good. Don't. And neither do you. This is not a space and has never been a space for perfect people. I am not perfect and I get it wrong. But I do learn and I do grow and I keep showing up. I keep showing up. I'm positive I'll get it wrong again, but that's life. And I just can't buy into a narrative that says that we all have to be judged by a mistake in our past. I just, I don't believe that. And so I don't hold those opinions as... Sorry. <laughs> this is a great point. Toilet Gate itself, the incident, wasn't even just a one day thing, like a one time thing. It was the follow up. It was the first apology that she said, Is it because I have a house cleaner? Is it because, are you mad because I said that, you know, whatever? I don't even remember exactly what the apology is. I have it in my video um, that I did about her, about Toilet Gate when it first happened from 20, 2021. Um, but I went through the whole apology and it was like, is it because this? Is it because that? Are you mad because this and that? It was like very weird of an apology. She deleted that, then posted a follow-up later. But this whole thing was like a week between the posting. She didn't pull it down for a while. Then she kept it up and then she posted the, the apology. Then she deleted that. Then she posted another apology. So the incident itself also shows when something bad happens, you're not willing to apologize. Girl, stop apologizing. <laughs> it's what she said to everybody. Um, she refused to acknowledge that she was in the wrong at all. And then when the Maya Angelou thing happened before that, she said, 
it was my team. It wasn't me. Don't blame me. It wasn't me. It was my team. She's fired now. Who cares? Not me. Don't blame me. People didn't like that either. That was several incidences, you know, not just one time thing. <sighs> my truth. And if something like that happens to you, if you see a negative comment or someone says something about the way you look or someone says that you're bad at your job or I hope that you will pretend that they said something so outlandish, like pretend that they said, oh my gosh, Lauren is an alien from outer space and I saw her make out with my dog yesterday. Like pretend that they said something so bananas that you just... You're like, whoa, okay. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you again. I appreciate that. Uh, Kimberly says, one bad day, several plagiarisms, one fake marriage. Let's keep this going. Yeah, what else is? What else can we add to the um, the balance sheet? Basically, it's like uh, as Dave says. Now, this is this, well. This comes from someone who told Dave, who Dave then told the team at um, Hollis Co. Cause I remember it from one of his videos or one of her videos where he was speaking. It was like, every time someone interacts with your brand, they're either having a withdrawal or a deposit of a personal experience. Like they're either taking away something good or they had something good to say about it or it's bad. And you know, you know there's never, it's never a neutral experience. It's either you're like, you're taking something good from it or you're taking something bad from it or something like that along those lines. So, for Rachel's balance sheet, is she problematic? Let's figure out the algebra. Okay, X plus, you know, toilet gate plus Maya Angelou minus want intent her intention times 15 years, you know, I don't know. Like, I think it computing that she turns out to be problematic. And I I think that's pretty evident. Um, and then I would also argue like her lessons and teachings aren't that helpful to anyone but Rachel themselves. Like she, there's this one woman named Kia, <laughs> Kia, but K-I-A-H, was on the Kelly Clarkson's show. She read Girl, Wash Your Face and lost like 100 pounds. Like she would say, Rachel, help me. And I would say, yes, yeah, she did help her to, to accomplish that goal. But at the same time, it's like, is that worth the shaming in the book is that it was it just like something else that the woman was going through and then happened to read that book at the same time and then attributes it to that like does her work help more people than it may potentially hurt I don't think so personally I think there's other people that you could look to to get better advice about the same topic but I don't know. That's my own personal opinion. But thank you, Kimberly. And for that, I say, what happened to dinosaurs? Let me know if you find out. <laughs> That's wild. That person has a really interesting world perspective, but that actually has no bearing on my life because it doesn't. I, I don't know what the end game is. for. And I guess the advice here is what she's saying. She's like, if someone gives you legitimate feedback on something or says something that you find to be negative, just repress that immediately and then gaslight yourself into thinking that they said something else that's not relevant <laughs> or real or true. That's good advice. That's good growth advice. I think what you should do is take what someone says, and I do this a lot, and sometimes it does hurt my feelings, but it's like, well... I think I need, still need to do it though. You take what someone says and you go, okay, do I agree with that? Okay, maybe a little bit. Okay, maybe next time I could do something different or no. Mm, yes, okay, next time I don't like how she phrased that or he phrased that. I don't like the negative you know, vibe of what you're ugly and you also said this thing. It's like, okay, well, I didn't like the ugly part, but you know, the second part, what you said, it was like sort of true. Next time, maybe I can work on that. Does that make... Like, is that so bad to do? And to just go, yeah, you know, this the way you presented this was not perfect or great or wonderful, but like what you said, I can kind of understand. And then some things I'm gonna read, like someone said on my video about um, Gabby Bernstein today, someone was like, oh, I was watching this until you said you supported vaccines. I'm like, okay, well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> what your opinion on vaccines are. And I'm not going to try to win you over because I'm not going to change my stance on vaccines are a, a good thing for humanity. Sorry, if you disagree with that, we're going to have 
If you can't like watch a video by someone who believes in that, then you're never gonna wanna watch a video of mine again. So bye. <laughs> Sorry, like I'm not gonna change that. If they said, you know, you were a little hard. Someone said the other day, like you made a joke about being put in a facility, in a mental health facility. And that like, that I made a joke that I said, if I would have heard voices in my head, like Gabby Bernstein claims that she hears all day long, I would be po hosting this video from a facility. Now, two people said that that was too far. And I tend to agree. I say, you know what? Yeah, I thought it was a joke. And I, you know, I didn't, my intention was not to ridicule that population. However, it did. So I regret it. And I won't do it again. Does that make me a bad person because I'm admitting that, yes, I kind of missed the mark there, but I'm not going to hate myself for it? I, I just don't think so. I think that's a much more reasonable way to handle things. No, and I'm not going to pretend that the person said something off the wall, my, something made out with my dog. That's, a better, that's better for me to think that? No, it's not, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay. For people who want to hold on to past mistakes of public figures and want to keep bringing them up again and again. Um, I don't know what the point of that is. They're hundred percent allowed to, but I'm just going to keep doing my best. And there are lots of people who are also trying to do their best. And I'm sure you're one of them, but I think <laughs> thanks, Rachel. if you know in your heart who you are, that's going to help you so much because you can just ask yourself that simple question. Wait, am I a bad dad? Wait a minute. Did I? Sometimes we need to hear, right? Sometimes we need that course correction. I told you that story earlier where I learned something incredible and I learned more from that past harsh experience than any other time in my life. But I don't know that I believe that most of the people who still want to shame for a past mistake actually care about whether or not I've grown or learned or done what I needed to do. I don't because if they did, I feel like they'd be maybe paying a bit more attention. <laughs> I feel like there are people who just want to be mean on the internet. And that's their choice. And it's also your choice whether or not you want to show up in this space. Because frankly, if you don't need social media for work, oh, just go live your very real beautiful life. Just go do that. That's way better. But if you do need to be on it and it is helpful for the work you are trying to do, then make sure that you know yourself and that you are grounded completely in who you are so that nobody else gets to tell you who you are. That's my best advice. You're going to get it wrong, but you're going to keep doing your best. You're going to learn from your mistakes. And those mistakes and that learning is going to turn you into the very best version of you. And you're going to keep showing up and you're going to keep trying and you're going to keep learning and you're going to enjoy the process and the community that you are creating content for and not chase the wins, but chase the joy, chase the impact, chase showing up online as the version of human being that you want to see more of in the world. I hope that was helpful, guys. I know this was a long one. And if you're still with me, I would really appreciate if you have a buddy that you think this could be helpful. Isn't the biggest irony, though, that this podcast was deleted and I, we have to play it through my recorded uh, photos? Like I had to like literally spend an hour recording it playing so that we could have this conversation the whole conversation is about making sure you know when to post and i learned all these things and i'm i learned it so well i'm the number one person to give you this advice because i've gone through it and multiple times been canceled learned my lesson now i'm here to teach you what to do the irony that it then got deleted <laughs> is hard to look past 
it's hard to ignore the 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 humor of that, right? Like it just is. We we have to laugh sometimes, Rachel, and enjoy our life. And this is one of those ironic moments where it's like, man, she had a whole podcast about what you should and should not do etiquette on social media and apparently she regretted posting this or someone told her what she said she no longer will ever have anyone tell her what her personal beliefs are so she had a change of heart 24 hours later not even 24 hours four hours five hours later after she posted this this hot take on uh, her cancellations i this is my prediction i think that she saw she okay here's a let me start over my prediction is that Rachel did not believe how can- she didn't understand how canceled she was. She really believed that rise, the last rise in Austin was right around the time COVID was, you know, was starting to go away, but was still kind of, people were nervous that it could come back and, you know, people were traveling, but really not that much. And vaccines were available, but not everyone had all three yet. And because it was like Memorial Day last year <clears throat> when, when it happened. So I think she justified that in her head, like, well, you know, and it's, it was expensive. It was like $2,000 for VIP to go. And so she thinks she thought like, well, all those factors and probably how close it was in time to uh, toilet gate. She thought like, OK, that pe- there was only 100 people that went and that's being generous, saying 100 people went um, at least in person. Uh, that, um, you know, that was the reason that people didn't go. Not that they didn't like her anymore, because if her podcast numbers are good, she posts something on Instagram, a lot of people, minus the LGBTQ stuff, are pretty positive about her posts. Um, she doesn't get many views on YouTube, but, you know, the, the comments that she does get are fairly positive, at least the ones that I see, for the most part. So maybe she thought, really, in her heart, like, okay, the solution is we'll go to different cities in the South and the middle of the country where people still probably like me enough. And, um, and I'll, I'll just come back. This will be my comeback. And then when the tickets went on sale, they sold like 20 in venues, 30, probably no VIP or very little VIP. So she knows she's going to get embarrassed. She's going to be embarrassed. If she has to cancel, it's embarrassing. Or if she goes and that people take a picture of the room and there's 15 people there. And that is not the Rachel Hollis that she wants to be. She wants to be Rachel Hollis jumping on stage, dancing, and people going like, yes, and crying. All the footage that she showed as a preview of what Rach Talk Live is going to be, which is confusing. But that's the version she wants to show up as, as they say, as Heidi would say, and Rachel would say. You know, she wants to show up as the winner. She wants to show up as the guru, not the, not the has-been. And I don't mean that in a mean way, like she's a has-been, wash-up, old 39-year-old, like women just suck. I mean it like in the way of the career, like someone who's past their prime, someone who's done, they've hit their peak in 2019, and unless completely changes their entire persona and brand, most likely will never recover. You know, I think, I think the longer she doubles down, she's not even doubling down though. She's not doubling down. She's like, she's just saying that none of it should have happened. She shouldn't have been canceled because she didn't mean to be. So therefore it's irrelevant. And she's doing the same thing that she was doing before, just worse with less help. But her lessons and her messages are the same. She's still writing books about her life, nonfiction. I think I'm guessing I actually don't know that for sure. It could be fiction. If that's the case, then maybe that is the right direction for her to go in. Going back to the roots, doing something, you know, different. And she made a promise to herself before where it was like, I'm only going to speak on my own stages. She broke that promise because she went on to um, ClickFunnels. She went to Russell Branson's thing. So she's already breaking her own promises, which was against her moral beliefs before. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the treadmill drunk because I never break a promise to myself. She's breaking promises to herself by going on other people's stages. She said that was a promise that she would never break, and here we are. So she's already making exceptions to things. I I tend to think that unless she, I think if I was her, I would get back with Dave. (laughs) I've already said that. If I was like a strategic lifestyle blogger as she is, 
and I didn't care <laughs> about my personal life or my children's lives, I would get back with Dave and then write a book together about how we repaired our marriage, how hard it was, how our kids reacted, those, that, those two years apart, what went wrong, what went right, you know, forgiveness, all that stuff. That's our only chance, both of them, I think, of recovering in the same industry that they started in or that they're in now, self-help and personal development. That would be unique. That would be a real story of, you know, somebody doing something different. Obviously, that's the same thing as unique, but doing something hard. Um, they're both, you know, have online presence. They both could rise from the ashes, as they say. And they would get a lot of press coverage. And they probably would sell the book because, you know, people who don't like them want the tea too. So that's my suggestion as a social media strategist. Um, but what I think if, if she doesn't want to do that and she does care about her kids and like their mental health, take a year off. Don't post one goddamn thing. Take a year off, stay in Hawaii, buy a place in Hawaii, rent a house in Hawaii, whatever you want to do, if that's where you want to be and relax. Don't do anything, nothing, nothing in public, not one thing. Hang out with friends, go to the beach hang out with your kids, take them to school, do all the shit that, you know, whatever, Pilates, whatever. Cook, nothing that the public can see. Take that year, think. Just think about what you want, what you want in your life, what you think the world needs, what you, you know, what your goals are, write it down in your journal, go to therapy, all that stuff. And then in one year, make an action. Don't act until a year has passed. I think she's, she's probably got enough money that she could do that. And then in a year, either go back to school or start a new business or attempt to do the business before that you were doing it with women's whatever, but have a, give people a year break so that they can warm up to you again. Otherwise, you're just going to be going in this cycle where you haven't given people a chance to like relax. <laughs> like every time I'm like, I'm going to take a break from Rachel Hollis. There's a podcast that she posts and then deletes. <laughs> You know, so I, it's like I'm constantly listening to the content and, and being unsatisfied by the depth of it, I guess. And so then I talk about it. And then that's a circle, too, where it's like you say something, we, we cover it and it never stops. So that's like some actual real advice that I would, you know, as as a as a hater troll on the Internet, I have for her, you know, uh, she's got a boyfriend, too, who's in, you know, do the music stuff, too quietly silently alone do the music stuff enjoy that no one's asking you to be perfect I, I just don't understand she she talks about social media in such a negative way she hates it doesn't like it she's forced to do it for her job are you or are you just unwilling to give up because you said you're a person who never gives up listen giving up has been some of the the best things for me giving things up in my life and I was the same way as her in the sense when I was younger we're like no, if I give up, if I quit, I'm a quitter. I'm a loser. Giving up relationships, giving up jobs, giving up dreams, honestly, has made my mental health so much better. It's giving up the dream for living in reality. And living in reality can be great. It can also be shitty. It can be both. But if you live in a dream, you're never going to live in the real world. So what's the point? You're not even living, you're sleeping. Okay, now I'm going into like philosophical, like, are you awake in your life, guys? <sighs> um, let me see if I can find this login real quick. Um, because, oh, yes, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see, because I could see the clip that someone sent me that they said that Rachel talked about the finances, because I'm interested in that. I'm interested in the finances of Rachel Hollis Hollis Co. There's, I'm going to play it at some point, but there was also like a video where, because Rachel also was like deflecting to COVID a lot and saying like COVID was the reason my company failed. And I just was like, that doesn't seem realistic. And then I found an interview she did with a, a reporter from PBS <clears throat> where she said that during COVID she had the best year possible financially. Plus they got a million dollar uh, PPP loan. So 
I think it was the um, cancellation that caused the financial distress, not COVID. And that is probably something she has shame about, but doesn't want to admit to because a lot of people lost their jobs. She had 60 employees. It looks like she has two. If, if she's got two full-time employees left, they might not even be full-time. It might be contractors. That is a, that's something to feel bad about. Yeah. To move on from, but feel bad about it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, strategies and plan for the best year ever. Okay. I hope I don't get in trouble for sharing this because it's behind a paywall. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll see. Anyways, um, while I'm here, while I'm here, called uh, uh, Oahu, and I'm really grateful to. Okay, if I get copyright strike for this, then I will just cut this part of the video. <laughs> Right? Hopefully I don't get sued. Okay. She said it's around one minute-ish. Spiritual energy is pouring into your head right now. I know Thank you. you. I need it. <laughs> I need it. Okay. So let's just take a quick moment. I'm looking over here. Let's see where we're at. Uh, we've got Sarah from Chicago. We've got Hannah in Denver, Heather and hey, Zoom feature. I love getting to look at y'all. Um, and I just love to start with a couple of things. Number one, want, let's practice this chat roll real quick. So tell me who you are, where you're from, and please know if this is your first time ever joining us for coaching. Also, Michelle, I'm so excited to see your face because I'm going to reference you today. I can't believe you're here. This is perfect. You're going to love this it was meant to be at uh, stars now i got the email and i was like oh finally so hi michelle i live in new york i was at rise and got to have dinner with that gorgeous lady over there cheers it's good to see her good to see her face my spiritual energy is pouring into your head right now i know Thank you, you. Know. i need it <laughs> I need it. Okay, so let's just take a quick moment. I'm looking over here. Let's see where we're at. Uh, we've got Sarah from Chicago. We've got Hannah in Denver, Heather, and no, it went by too fast for me. Um, we've got Jordan, hello, Kelly in Michigan, Bethany in South Carolina, Lisa in Australia. It's midnight, she says. Shout out to everybody who stayed up late to do this. God bless you. Uh, Courtney in Ontario, Canada. Got the Bay Area, California, Christine in Virginia. Y'all, I'm so grateful that you're here. To the point. Um, and really excited to talk about one of my favorite conversations, uh, which is planning out the year. And how do we take the things that worked from the last 12 months and make sure that we pour gasoline on them and bring them into what's going to work for us next year? And how do we let go of anything that is not serving us? It's actually a really beautiful time to have this conversation because Saturday is a Saturday, yes, Saturday is a full moon. And the full moon, if you haven't listened to my podcast about this, the full moon is all about asking yourself, what do you need to let go of? And one of the things I'd love to start with right at the top is us sort of like hooking into the idea that our growth and our evolution and our becoming the best version of ourselves usually isn't a just talk about the finances, about adding more things. Becoming the best version of ourselves is often about understanding what we need to edit, what we need to let go, where are those anchors that are pulling us down. So as we have these conversations about what's coming next, I also want you to be thinking through the lens of what do I need to release that's no longer serving me in order for me to be the best version of myself. So that's my intention as we start this conversation. Today I was grabbing Oh, okay. Maybe she's not talking about now. Okay. Well, let's go back to regular sound speed. Coffee for us across the street before I jump. Oh, she was the coffee bitch. She was the coffee bitch today. If you didn't listen to that, there's a, a vlog that Rachel posted. She said, whoever gets coffee from the office, we call them the coffee bitch. <laughs> so that's nice. I jumped over here. My boyfriend was like, oh, are you, are you excited? Are you, how are you feeling about doing coaching? Because you've never done it from another location. And I was like, honestly, I'm so, um, but this is my favorite conversation. I went to dinner with my best friends last week and Beans was like, okay, Rach, like what's coming in 2022? We know you have a plan. Like I geek out over this topic. So let's jump in. Um, I want to start in kind of an interesting place with y'all today because I want to 
and I, I am always aiming to be authentic with y'all. And <laughs> okay. I have had a really hard few. Oh, okay. Okay. We're coming to it. Um, I'm aiming to be authentic with y'all. And then literally says, I was forced into a role that I am not, and I am not myself in anything that I've ever produced. Any videos I ever do is not me. It's like, okay. A few weeks. Um, we I'm go. not ready to talk about it yet. I, I will talk about it at some point. I'm just not there yet. Um, but I have had the hardest few weeks of my life. And, um, and still I'm really feeling that. Thank you. I see you. Um, still I'm really feeling that and still I'm really in that place. And that's not a bad thing. Um, I was talking to a therapist uh, earlier this year and we were talking about purpose. And he said, you know, what's your purpose? And I said, oh, I got this. I know. I've like figured this out. If my therapist asked me what my purpose was, I would like just leave. I'm like, All right, see ya. <laughs> Bye, Carol. <laughs> That's my therapist's name. Uh, she would never ask that because it's not a real question that a therapist would ask, I don't think. Well, I shouldn't say that, but like, what is your purpose? Like, well, uh, uh, that's a very convoluted question. On the most basic level, the reason that I think I'm here is to make as many beautiful memories as possible with the people I love most. That's why I'm here. And he was like, he like knocked me sideways because I thought this therapist is about to get me a, give me a gold star. Right. Like I just said, I didn't say I want fame or glory or money or whatever. I was like beautiful memories of people I love most. And he said, what's your definition of beautiful? And immediately I got the image in my head of my mom who is walking my grandmother through the last bit of her life. Mima is um, in her late 80s and has been in really poor health for a couple of years and got COVID and really hasn't recovered from that and, and won't. And it's hard. Okay. And I don't know if any of you guys have parents who are aging or you've had to walk through this process, but I'm watching my mom grapple with her mother who doesn't always recognize her or who doesn't always know where she is and how painful that is and how difficult and all of the process. And as soon as he said that to me, what's your definition of beautiful? I thought of my mom. Yeah, this sounds like a life coach. This doesn't sound like therapy to me, but I don't know. Because walking her mother through this season is beautiful, even if it's hard. And so as I'm in this place right now, I'm thinking about the idea that even if it's hard, and even if I don't understand why, there's still beauty here. And so where I want us to start before we jump into where we're going and how we're gonna get there is I wanna talk about something called mortality motivation. You have a ton of notes in your workbook. If you haven't ever heard me say this before, you are five times more likely to retain information if you write it down. So whenever I'm doing a class like this, I just take all the notes and I'll review them later for myself. But then that way I just get down whatever I can. So mortality motivation, it's not something you have in your workbook. Mortality motivation is any time that someone experiences a near-death experience someone experiences a really intense loss, if you've ever lost a family member or a close friend, and when you lose that person or when you go through that experience, it makes you question your own mortality. Raise your hand for me right now if you've ever gone through an experience where you're like, you experience the loss and then you're like, what am I doing? Right? What, why am I even here? Like, what's all of you raising your hand? I see it. Like, what is going on? Why am I even fighting this hard? Why am I trying for this thing? I think a lot of us experience some version of mortality motivation. So long. I just want to hear about the finances of the company. When COVID happened, Let's go we, if you haven't asked yourself that question in the last 18 months, like, what is all this for? What was I trying? For. I remember all of my friends were like so focused on making money and driving a nice car and doing all these things and COVID happened and they were all in lockdown friends. and now suddenly every single status symbol that they had worked for their entire life, they couldn't show it to anybody anymore. Couldn't go drive that fancy car, couldn't go take that purse out, couldn't go wear the cute clothes. And all of a sudden they found themselves going, what the hell is the point? What am I doing? So I find myself right now in this moment of thinking that life was going to be one way and then everything got flipped upside down. And so as I'm going into 2022, I'm asking bigger questions hey and guys, I would love for us to start in a place where you and like, please, I say this with so much um, respect and I don't mean this to sound bad. But if you had one year to live, one year, this is it. 2022 is all you got. If you knew that in advance, if you knew this was it, 
how would you be living your life differently? I just read a great book. I, I sent it out in an email on Sunday. If you guys haven't checked it out called The War of Art, please get this book. If you haven't read it, it's this thin. It will not take you very much time. It's about creativity, but he approaches creativity through the lens of like, if you're a business owner, if you're a mama, if you're trying to write a book, you're trying to, it doesn't matter what you're doing. We all have this creativity inside of us. And he tells the story of a psychologist that specializes in, in people who are at the end of their life. And at the end of their life, you find out you go to a doctor and they tell you, you got six months to live. You have three months to live. You have nine months to live. And it's a sure thing. And you know, you're at the end that fast. Every single priority changes. And the question he asks in the book is why does it take that? for us to live as authentic selves. He said that people find out this story and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I only have nine months, I gotta write the book. I only have nine months, I've gotta make amends. I only have nine months, I gotta make sure that I'm connecting with my children. I only have nine months, this is what I have to do. So if you only had this year, if you only had this year, how would you live it differently? Every single bit of work we're gonna do today, I want you to look at it through that lens. How would you pursue a different kind of life for yourself, for your family, for your children, for your friends? How would your impact change? How would your goals change if this was it? Okay, so. Now that we just have a very serious start to our to our conversation, I promise that's the deepest I'm going to get with you guys today. Um, let's start with some really tactical stuff. We're going to get into big picture, but I want to... Mm, okay, I'll have to review this later because it's like way too long. I want to hear just the stuff that is juicy. Um, someone asked when did this come out? I don't know. Doesn't say, doesn't tell me. Um, someone on Instagram sent me a link to a Rachel Hollis episode. It says a message from Rachel. When did this come out? Today? That would be interesting. That would be juicy. That would be a great follow-up. Let's see. This is a message from Rachel. Hey, guys. It's Rachel. Last week, I posted a video on social media that I thought was empowering. Oh, okay. This is a, so this is an old one. So this is, this is the last one we listened to today. This is Rachel after the controversy, I guess. Her responding to it and what she thought about it. I did. Like, I feel so fucking stupid in retrospect, but I really thought that it was empowering. It doesn't even matter. That's something I've been told a lot over the last week and a half is it doesn't matter why it matters how it was received and, um, how it was received was deeply hurtful for a lot of people. And that is crushing to me. That's crushing to me. I've done so much reflection and I still have so much more to do. One, what date is this from One of though? the big realizations for me is how deeply my privilege as a white woman runs. I didn't understand how that would be hurtful to others. And that's my privilege, right? Like because I don't have to filter things that I say or the content that I create through any sort of lens, that is the privilege. Like, because I didn't think, man, how does this sound for a white woman to say these things? That is my privilege. And it is a fucked up and deeply unfair privilege that you have if you're white in America that you don't have to think about the fact that you're white. I hate that this is still... Wait... What does this have to do about race? <laughs> is she saying that the cleaning woman was black? I'm sorry, I'm missing the race angle. Still in me. It was the. It was more of a class issue. And I guess, in retrospect, it's stupid to think that you could do, you know, five years of learning and it will erase the 33 years that came before that or the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years that racism has been practiced in this country. What is but, she talking about? Yeah, it's still in there. What is she talking about? Is she talking about Maya Angelou? This is how much I'm, I'm like not relating to this because it's so vague. I don't even know what scandal she's talking about. There's no date on this podcast. Barely. I'm trying to look for because it Because I did this thing and I hurt people and I hurt people not just people on social okay this came out i'm seeing it now this came out uh april 22nd 
2021. So right around the time of the cancellation. Okay. Continue. Social media, which is devastating, but I hurt my friends and I hurt my team at work who fight so hard for this brand and for empowering women and lifting them up. And I did something that made it so that a whole group of women don't feel safe to be in this community with us. And that is devastating. And I will carry the shame of it with me for the rest of my life. But then didn't she just say that she didn't, like, she doesn't really have shame because she meant it nicely? You know, when I got into this world, like when I started a podcast or when I started to write nonfiction, I got into it because I was curious. Like, I had so many I'm seeing some of the comments come in about, like, she compared herself to women of color. Yes, okay. That I agree with, but I still don't think it's a race issue. To me, that was like on a, an audacity issue. Like you believe you're Harriet Tubman, like the level of success, I guess, that Harriet Tubman had as in her life, not being in like an entrepreneur, but the selflessness and the historical relevance of Harriet Tubman Yes, she's black, but I don't find that to be a race issue as much as is it like, are you insane that you think that you as a self-help guru are on the same level as Harriet Tubman or Malala Yousafzai? Like, they're women of color, but to me, it's still like, it's like a, it's like a how big your ego is issue. Less of a race issue, at least outwardly. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading it weirdly but because it's almost like it's almost like she's she's saying like all white women have this problem (laughs) you know all white women just don't know their privilege and as a white woman I just should have been better it's not as a white woman she needs to learn it's as Rachel Hollis said these horrible things and stupid things to prop herself up that's not a white woman's stance (laughs) that's a her personal take on one issue questions about how the world worked or how life worked or why people do things the way they do or why I do things the way that I do and somewhere along the way in stepping into personal development all of the leaders no I shouldn't say all of the leaders but so many of the leaders in this space are teachers and they're so confidently teaching and they're so like this is what I know and this is what you should do. As a student of that, there's a, I don't know, romance in someone else telling you they have the answers. Like growing up in church, that's what church was in so many ways as a little girl was like, oh no, these are the rules. And that person on stage, they have the answers. And if I just do what that teacher says, then everything's going to be okay. And somewhere along the line, it flipped And I felt like I was a teacher. And I tried really hard to always say, like, look, I'm not an expert. These are just things that I know from my life, and they helped me, and maybe they'll help you. But I think that if you spend years teaching, that at some point your ego starts to believe that you know all the answers. You stop being curious, and you're, I don't know, you start assuming that you don't have so much to learn and this is where I find myself and I still have okay that's a good admission I guess it's more of an admission that I've heard in the podcast from yesterday that she her ego got in the way of her actually being helpful okay that's good it seems to have dwindled since April of 2021 but uh all right I'll give her that that's a good thing to say I think. to unpack and process and work through because I have to hold space for the mistake that I made and the pain that I caused. I have to hold space for... Again, though, she's not saying anything specific. Like, it's so vague. I could barely tell what controversy she was referring to at the beginning. The things that... It's I- hard to really understand the context if... <laughs> 
I did. The way she's talking about it. So that's what's happened. And now, like with any hard thing, you have to ask yourself, what are you going to decide that this means? Are you going to decide that you're going to stick your head in the sand and you're going to pretend it didn't happen or you're going to quickly move forward or you're going to sort of do whatever makes it look like in public you did the right thing but privately you didn't change your heart at all and just none of those are right so what it means for me first and foremost is um that the structure of this business has to change um and the first step that i am taking to change that is I am postponing at a women's conference planned for May. And one of the first things I thought in all of this was, who the fuck am I to think that I could teach other women anything when I still have this much to learn? I'll be working on this for the rest of my life. But to try and speak <clears throat> or lead out on something or work with integrity when I haven't fully unpacked this or unlearned this or done. I don't know how to feel about this. She only really got, it sounds like she's like upset now because her money is being uh, played with, you know, like I'm canceling the event. Ooh, this is the hard part. But again, it's like, I don't even think she, I don't know. It's so vague. You're not saying anything really. Like I need to learn all the things, all the things of working hard. I need to work on the hard. I need to do the work. It's all meaningless. Like what specifically are you doing? Enough feels so wrong. My best friend has been so insanely graceful to me in this process. And she said to me the other day, She's like, you know, people think that we learn best the way we learn in school. Like you sit and you listen to someone teach and you memorize the information and that's how you learn. But she's like, honestly, the way we really learn, like something sinking into our bones is by going through something deeply painful. Because that's the shit you're never going to forget. And I understand that for me to hold any kind of... Uh... I love this apology from influencers generally. It's like, I'm so grateful to have learned this lesson and I wouldn't have learned it if I didn't make this mistake. So therefore justifying the hurt that they've caused people with whatever they've done and said by their own personal growth and learning. It's like, oh, great. I'm glad that you learned this thing that most of us learn not to do by, you know, just observing and learning to be kind people. Um, but I'm glad that you, you know, offended uh, you know, a million women. That was the price of admission to learn this lesson that's pretty straightforward. Don't insult people who have jobs that work for you that are trying to make their life and your life better. Simple. Don't compare yourself to people who are historically significant and think that you're on that level when you've done nothing and have no idea about the struggles that they've gone through. And I think I remember now, now thinking about this again, the cis thing, that was part, that was like a, like a cultural kind of appropriation issue. I remember that. So that's, that does make sense. Okay. Thank you everybody for reminding me. Cause I'm, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack as she says. Okay. We're almost done. Um, platform. Or for me to get to do this work, or for me to get to speak to any sort of audience at all, this was a, a necessary pain, is a necessary pain. And I wish with every single fiber of my being, I wish that I didn't have to hurt so many people in the process of understanding that this was a lesson I still needed to learn. Okay. All right. So but she kind I of did. acknowledges it. And I own that. And I'm sorry. 
you're listening to this and you feel this is I just need to address this this is deeply uncomfortable the voice that she has in this podcast I'm sorry and I just want to say it's on me but really it's on my team like okay we know that you're sad about this that you've been canceled but you don't really have to the dramatics are quite dramatic hurt and disappointed by me I'm so fucking sorry yeah it sounds but what I want you to see from this that you're about to burst into tears no tears I want you to see change in me me too and how I operate in the world and so I have work to do I have to listen and I have to do better and I have to work to unpack this thing inside of me and that's not something that happens in a week or a month that's a lifetime of work apparently it happens in a year and two months because she's over it (laughs) She shouldn't be held responsible for this mistake any longer. It was years ago. It was years and year and two months ago. So long ago. I'm over it. I shouldn't be held. I shouldn't be called problematic for a problem that happened a year and two months ago. Psh. People need to be over it by now. I don't get to hear what, what JLo thinks because she just puts heart emoji on her Instagram. It's really causing me strife. This is horrible. The world we live in. I don't get to know what Jennifer Lopez thinks at all times. This is what we're losing out on, people. This is what's at stake. When something like this happens in such a public way, I think there is a desire to see the work that needs to be done in an equally public way. But for me... (laughs) I think that real, true, authentic change takes time. And it takes the real people in your life who hold you accountable in significant ways, not just the public perception. And so I am going to do the work and I'm going to do the work with my dearest friends and my colleagues and my therapist and as much as there will be parts of this process that I will talk about publicly because I think that This is a conversation that needs to happen and needs to continue to happen. Um, In order for this to be real, it has to be something that I do for myself and for my kids and for my friends. And that is private work. That is not something that I want to do to show off right like I want to do I want to do this work and I want to unpack these parts of me oh, God. because this is so stupid <laughs> sorry of who I want to be I can't change the way that the public views me but I can change who I am on the inside so that I can feel proud of how I show up as a woman and a mother and a friend and a leader for my team. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So, but remember, okay, so she, she canceled the, the rise that was supposed to come like the next month or whatever, but then they postponed it and then it happened hybrid. Like, well, it was April, 2021. So then she did it. Whenever I posted my video, let's see. All these dates are messing me up. I'm like this whole since twenty, it's still twenty twenty to me in my mind. I'm like we haven't we haven't passed that year yet. We're still in twenty twenty to me. Um, she said, "I'm gonna redo my content. I'm gonna rethink my content and make it more 
um, like minority friendly or something like that, she said, you know, like to keep them in mind and to, to be more inclusive. And I went to the, I went to the one, the, the, the <laughs> rise that came after Toilet Gate, uh, which was, I will tell you the date. Um, okay, I posted the video nine months ago. Here's the clip. Let me make this a square. Let's make it a square. Um, make myself smaller. Make it a, a make it a, a rectangle. <laughs> um, okay, so so it must have been Labor Day then, right? Because September fourteenth. Yeah, that's Labor Day. Okay, so not Memorial Day. Sorry, Labor Day, 2021. So she, the Sotola Gate happened April 2021. She had rise in September 2021. And um, so that was, she did all the learning that she needed to be, all the work was done because she said in that podcast that we just listened to that like, oh, I have so much work to unpack and to work before I can ever be on a stage again. Okay, so she's already on a stage in September. So she said, uh, March, no, <laughs> April, May, June, July, August. Okay. Five months was enough. She learned her lesson in five months. Okay. Um, she, all the content that she did was regurgitated information. She told the ta- tampon story. She talked about how Dave was actually the one who screwed her over with uh, being on all the stages, the MLM stages. Like he was the one pushing her to be successful. It wasn't her. She hates hustle culture. She's never been a fan. There was no talk of race that I remember at all. She did have multiple, she did have people of different races, I will say. Yeah, she did. She had uh, some Asian um, speakers. She had a black host, as you can see, MC. Uh, and a DJ. So there was a good variety, I will say. But other than that, other than representation, there was no lessons or anything, you know, related to, okay, we're going to talk about my cancellation. There was none of that. It was like, hey guys, I'm going to teach you how to be, you know, I'm going to be Tony Robbins and you're going to be the people in the audience. And we're going to pretend that I was never canceled. And I've always been this way and everything's perfect. I mean, okay, so that was her choice. But then to post what she just posted yesterday and then deleted, it just seems like kind of like her trying to do the work privately and be accepted back into society or not society. She's in, she's in society already. But to be ac- accepted back into rock star status, guru status, it hasn't happened yet or probably will never happen. And I think she's just pissed about it. She's like, aren't you guys over this by now? Aren't you guys done with this? I was done with it five months ago. Or a year ago. It happened years ago. Anyways, okay. Well, once again, um, good call deleting that, Rach. I think that was a good call. <laughs> Moving forward, um, maybe listen to the Skinny Confidential podcast that you gave. And this is my, direct, my other advice to Rachel. Maybe listen to your interview with Skinny Confidential again. Because in that interview that you gave to kind of explain away, once again, Toilet Gate from happening in a, in a non-safe space, okay, um, you said that you weren't, you're done giving women advice. You're bored of it. You want to be known for more than that. And you want to just be like low-key, like John Favreau. <laughs> Why don't you just do that, man? Just do that for a while. Like, just do something else. And she says she wrote, she's writing a book again. Okay, that's the same MO. She's on tour talking about women crying and laughing and and inspiring women. Okay, that's your MO from before. Nothing's changed there. She says she wrote a screenplay, but apparently she doesn't really stand behind it that much because no one's read it or heard of it. And she just continues to do the old stuff. She has a podcast. She had that for years. She wrote books. She wrote books, nonfiction. Okay, she's doing that still. Like nothing's really changed, other than like, I went away for a little bit. I don't post as much on Instagram. Okay. What else you got? <laughs> Anyways, now we're coming up on four hours. Oh my god. Okay. It's time to go. It's time to go. I am over this. And I'll look up this. I'll watch the rest of this video and I'll 
do it less on the fly with her inner circle stuff because I'm interested, but it's a, it's a long video, so I didn't want to keep it on too long. <sighs> yeah, I think she might be canceling this tour because it ain't looking good for her thus far. Usually if it's something's going to sell out, you know, it's going to sell out sooner than later. Maybe. Maybe. Um, do you want to look at something funny for one second? I, I haven't had the right moment to play or to, to talk about it, but it's been in my folder for a while. And since, since we've already been talking for this long, maybe not everyone will be watching because <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why this, speaking of race. <laughs> okay, this is Dave's post from, well, it's gotta be from a while ago. It's at least from like a year, it's a year ago longer or longer when he was on the internet. So before January of 2022, because he took his break in January. Um, this is something that David, Dave, David, David posted, Dave Hollis posted <laughs> that has never been addressed as far as I know. Okay. Not to get political, but the five most important Michaels in history are Michael Douglas, Michael Bolton, Michael Keaton, Michael Sarah, and Michael J. Fox. The facts are indisputable. It's science. Prove me wrong. Um, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't think Michael Jordan is a little bit more important in history than Michael Sarah? <laughs> Does Dave not know that black people exist? <laughs> like, I can understand kind of omitting Michael Jackson. I mean, I would tend to say, like, Michael Jackson is historically significant, but, you know. He had a lot of issues. But Michael Sarah, this guy, is the number two most important people. <laughs> per Michael in history? Like, I feel like he's, it's almost like a, like a statement. Like, I don't acknowledge anyone who's not white. <laughs> The guy from Superbad. Yeah, I know it's delayed, sorry. There's gotta be, and then people commented. Well, this is what it says. This is the, in case you wanted to know the, the caption. Obviously for Wall Street, the Captain Jack Sparrow SNL skit, the scowl on his face every time he opens his mouth and the irresistible Alex P. Keaton, respectively. The facts are clear. Science doesn't lie. I do not believe I missed anyone. What? I don't know. I just didn't have a moment to like talk about this in any way. Uh, so yeah, so I just wanted to bring this up. This is what Dave thinks. <laughs> I don't know. There's really no more to say about it but that. Dave. Dave? Am I talking? Okay, wait. And here's some of the comments. Dave, are we talking about peace? No, we're talking about the white Michaels of the world. Someone says, and we're just getting to be friends. Jordan, Jackson, Vic, Myers, Buble. Sir, respectfully, you forgot Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Michael Scott. Okay, and then Dave responds, oh man, I didn't consider some big names. Michael Scott deserves to be on the list for sure. So he picks out the one white guy? <laughs> Out of her two options, or her three options? Like, I'm not, I don't want to call anyone racist. That's not my intention. I don't. I don't find that, like, my place. But, there does seem to be something going on. <laughs> These things are not like the other. Anyways, um, draw your own conclusions, friends. Michael Sarah, number two most important Michael in history. If Dave Hollis says it, it must be true. Anyways, I'm glad that got got that off my chest. 
And now, uh, and I'll, I'll make that, maybe I can make that a short. <laughs> maybe I can make that footage a short. I think we need to just cancel Dave preemptively. He's coming back, he's back on Instagram. Let's just cancel him with that. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be on his podcast. So I made a mistake. I was think, I thought I was funny. But I guess I was wrong. Here's a seven page blog about it. Maybe we can start getting that going. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the character is more important than a real black person. That's what Dave Hollis thinks. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. I can't make this stuff up. Like, why would you post that? Anyways, okay. Thank you guys for joining me on this sort of impromptu uh, live stream. If, if there's any more posts that are then deleted, subsequently deleted, uh, within hours of time in the near future, we'll, we'll cover that too. Um, but until then, uh, I have a, a video coming out soon about um, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. I did a, finally, I did a book review about that. And I think it's really good, hopefully. Hopefully you like it. And then we got a Jay Shetty video coming, uh, hopefully next week. So buckle up, buckle up. Dave, what do you have to say? Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? I don't know, Dave. Why don't you put some other races on your Instagram? Not sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again to my patrons over on Patreon. I'm going to play, I'm going to put up the uh, shout out tier patrons. If some of you guys are, are in the chat, I know. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Shout out to Kimberly. Woo, I just added your name on there. That's why I know I remember because I had to copy over the, um, the accent E to make sure that it worked on the system and it did. So thank you for your support. And if you'd like to join my Patreon, I'm, I'm back and I'm active. So if you joined before and you're like, you're not active, this is a boring ass thing. I'm sorry. You're right. I take responsibility because my team wasn't active. So it's not my fault, but you know, I'll acknowledge it. Uh, but no, but yeah, there's, you can vote on what subject matters you want to talk about. Um, right now I'm trying to get a code to work for some merch discount and it's not working and I don't know how to fix it. So I got to call the company and figure out what the hell's going on. But that's also a little perk in the Patreon and, um, I'll keep, I'll keep evolving as the patron leader over years and months of time. It's years ago that I made this Patreon, years ago, like six months ago. <laughs> um, and uh, we would love to have you there and join the community. The community, the community. We're a community of like-minded individuals who like to talk shit about self-help gurus. If you'd like to join, I'll be there but I'm not gonna be your friend. And I won't claim that I love you because I don't know you guys. I love you. In real life. But we can't interact, so that's something. That's something to be said. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm out. <laughs> Sorry. Talk to you later. I'm rooting for you, but I don't love you because this is a one-way conversation. Oh, boo! Bye. But also...